having a lot. Sorry, we're having a lot of technical issues tonight. I don't know what is causing it. I don't know what is causing it. Please, sorry everybody that is watching. Please, sorry everybody that is watching. Oh, please, please, can you, FM, please, can you come online back? Sorry. Sorry. Sorry, we are waiting for send me please. If you're online, please send me a request. Sorry, you can if you're online, just send me a request. I'm waiting for you. I've been having a lot of technical issues tonight. Please if you're online, just send me a request. Send me a Please just send me a request. Please send me a request. The thing just cut off just now. Sorry, tonight we are talking about merit and the merit of new Naira notes. I have two guests that uh, we are having network issue. Uh, the CEO of Vector Markers, who have been on the line, we have also network break. That's why we will start again. Bro, if you are live, please just send me a request so that we we'll start. Uh, we we'll just start afresh and we'll quickly close tonight's show. Please, as many of our viewers, please, tomorrow we are going to talk about discovering your purpose with, with Femi Olorode. Uh, with Femi Olorode. Femi Olorode also is also speaking along with Femi tonight on new Nera notes. And please visit our YouTube channel, The Voice One Two. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us, visit our website, www.thevoice.com. www.thevoice. One two. The voice is D E V V O I C E. One two. Please, I want every one of you. Please, all of our friends, all of our followers. Please share it. Share, share it. Share it to your friends. Share it to everybody. Share it to everybody. Please, tell me. Please, if you are live, please just send me a request. We have small obstruction. I don't know what is causing it. The network is just breaking here but before you know i cannot even be able to save the current one we've done sorry i can see my pastor pastor Matthew. thank you for coming to the show tonight we want to talk about the, the new currency uh, we have got tonight i don't know the problem we are finding it very difficult about network issue we are finding it very very difficult i'm still waiting for the speaker two of them i'm waiting for them i'm waiting for them Please, February, if you cannot, you just send me a request. I will accept it. Uh, I will accept it. I will accept it. I will accept it. And if you have a question you want to ask the speakers, please, you can type it. And if you want me to bring you on live, you can send me a request. I'll bring you live. And we have a lot of content we are working on on the ground. By the grace of God, you see it on our YouTube channel. You see every of our content on our YouTube channel. You see it there. And the grace of God, please, I'm begging every of our loved ones, please, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Follow us. Follow us, please. Follow us on our YouTube channel. Uh, we are talking about the merit and the merit of the new Nera Uh Please, I'm waiting for... Uh, I'm waiting for... Peptop marker, please. Can you send me a request so that we come online? Yeah, family Loro Day, please. You can, yeah, 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 you've gotten it. Yes, yes, yes. Aha, yes. Now, hello, my brother. <laughs> finally, you <laughs> yeah, finally. We have been, uh, uh, sorry to cut you short. Femi, uh, Fept Up Maka, okay. see you, please. If you are live, please come back to, come back live. If you please come back, yeah, please come back to live so that we'll be able to discuss tonight's program. Thank you for coming to the show, my brother. Thank you so much, sir. <laughs> uh, good, good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening. It's nice meeting you. 
I, I was Thank saying so this much, before. Sir. I was I was just telling our viewer and including my friend Peptop Marcus, the CEO of Peptop Marcus, Femi, that the two people. Sorry, we have been having up and front of technical issue. I think we have yeah. said to it. Yes, yes, true. Okay. Uh, I said I've been. Uh, ju it's just coincidence. I don't even think of it when I reach out to you that we are having this, we are having that, and you accept the invitation. It's now I'm just even thinking of it that both of you are Femi, Femi. Oh wow, <laughs> that's interesting. <laughs> Good evening, Mr. Femi. <laughs> Yeah, good evening, MC. How are you doing, sir? I'm good. How uh, is you? Very well, very well. Nice meeting uh, you, sir. It's like Same here, he sir. study economics, you study uh, business administrative. Oh, okay. Right? Yeah, yeah, business administration. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Welcome to the show, Politics and Policy. We are tonight to discuss on oh. merit and the merit of new Nera notes. I will still go back to you, oh. my friend. I will be referring you to Fab Talk. I will refer him to Femi. Okay. That yeah, okay right. that's, that's fine. That's fine, sir. That's fine, sir. Okay. Fab Talk. Let us start okay. afresh. What is your own take about the new Nera notes? Oh. Okay. The new Nera note, like I said earlier on, was a, a, a shock to everybody. No one saw it coming, even though we have envisaged this at the inception of this administration that uh, President Muhammad Obari, once he steps in or, uh, uh, and gets power, is going to change the currency, which was part of the reason why when he came in, a lot of people were changing their money to foreign currencies and then the value of dollar was appreciating, why Naira was depreciating. So this was something that, we were, uh, that was envisaged before, but unfortunately everybody have relaxed and then nobody saw it coming. That is why I still have a lot of people that have stacked up, uh, up cash in their in their coffins and the uh, graves and tanks and the uh, water closets, you name it, they have just stacked up money somewhere. And uh, this is something that has uh, really broadened our horizon to see how wicked, how how, how callous and how uh, how dangerous human being can be when it comes to money. By the revelation we have been seeing on social media of late. We have people that have stacked up money inside Ghana was good. Money that have been there for 10 years, 20 years are coming out. You know, yesterday I was talking to someone and he said, that, Hey, Mr. Femi, did you see what I'm just seeing? He brought a bill of money and then the bill of money was still having Oceanic Bank. Uh, Oceanic Bank tag. I was like, wow, this is serious. So this person have kept this money for about 15 years because I think Oceanic Bank merged with uh, Inter, uh, with Access Bank, Intercontinental Bank before they became Access Bank. And that was done yeah. over 10 years ago. So just imagine people having that money wrapped. Yeah, more than 10 years ago, people having that money wrapped up. So it's, it's, so, it's, so, it's so funny that uh, we don't even know maybe we should criticize the government or we should appreciate them. But definitely is a pro and con. It has its own advantage and it has its own disadvantage. And one of the advantages it has is that number one, it's going to help us to reduce counterfeiting, which was one of the reasons I stated earlier. Now, it is enough for every government to change their, to redesign their currency. Number one, to reduce counterfeiting of their currency. A lot of people have ventured into this business of counterfeiting. They have the plate, they have the uh, the template. So what they just do is to get the chemical and mix it. I've been a victim of counterf uh, counterfeited money before. And I'm sure one or two people that are listening to us or watching us, including yourself, probably might have also been a victim of those who have received counterfeited money. So this is one of the advantages. Is going to push these people out of business. They have to go back to their drawing board, which may likely take them about a year or two for them to be able to get a template to start counterfeiting this current currency. That is number one. Number two reason is that it's going to help our cashless economy because definitely the CBI cannot just tell us that they are just going to redesign this currency and we still behave the same way we are behaving. No, our cashless policy should change. I'm envisaging a situation whereby. The, the maximum amount of money we'll be able to withdraw from our bank in a month but not be more than 10 million. I'm thinking 10 million should be the maximum you can withdraw in a month. You must not be able to withdraw more than 1 million at once from your bank. This must be a policy that should be introduced so that they can encourage people to be doing what? To be doing mobile banking. 
everybody should engage and embrace our mobile banking system. Do transfers. Let us let us discourage all this cashless economy. People are paying ransom in Naira because uh, and in cash because they believe that they can get money from the bank. Why will I go to bank and ask for 50 million and you give it to me cash? It is uncalled for. So I believe our cashless policy should be changed. In as in much we have decided to change and redesign our currency. So it's going to help the policy to work effectively. If this is not done, then I can tell you that this policy is just an effort in futility. Another advantage of this cashless policy, uh, of this uh, currency redesign, is that it's going to reduce the ordering of cash, of currency. A lot of people have stacked up money in their coven. It's going to reduce it. People will be able to spend money. Nobody will be able to say, I want to do this, I want to do that. And then I, I, I was reading an article where the CBN said that they want to reduce the number of currencies, especially higher denomination, like the 1,500. They are reducing it. The they, they, they are reducing it so that the, uh, the money in circulation will be more of lower notes, just as you have the USD. If you are going to debrief the change, if you want to change, even if it's one million naira, they will give you hundred hundred naira, hundred hundred dollars. You will never see them give you five five hundred dollar or two hundred dollars. In fact, there are some currency like pounds. You can only get a pound of. You can only get hundred pounds. What you get is twenty pounds, fifty pounds, you know, ten pounds. That is the lower denomination that is being spent, and that is what we should embrace. Because when we start doing this, our inflation level will reduce. So I'm believing that the uh, CBN knows better and they are going to work on this. So that going forward, we will not have this issue again. Number Another uh, reason is that it's going to bring a lot of people into the banking system. A lot of people have refused to save money in the bank. And that is why they are starting money. Truthfully, there are some people, especially some part of this country, which I don't want to mention them, not because of segregation or their lack of education, but a lot of people don't have bank accounts. A whole lot of businessmen. You know, unfortunately, I've been hearing people that say that they don't have bank accounts, they don't have bank accounts, and they're actually stacking money in their houses. So what this cashless policy and this currency design is going to embrace people to start saving money in the bank let us bring everybody into the banking system so that the number of money that we have outside the number of currency we have outside is going to reduce going forward so i believe these are some of, of the advantage i believe my brother here we also expatiate more on some of the advantages thank you very much sir. uh thank you very much uh let me uh, Olorode, what is your own take? What is your own take about the new Nera notes? Uh, 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 all right, sir. Uh, I think if I'm going to start with this conversation, the first time I heard about the redesigning of the Naira notes, I begin to imagine in my mind, especially on Wednesday last week, when I have a, I, I got a glance on the new designs and what came to my mind was that um what is the essence of designing a new naira note when the value as is yet to appreciate sincerely i think about wednesday or thursday about uh, i i was able to lay my hands on about 200 dollars and the value of $200 as at last week Wednesday was running to about 153,000 Naira. And at the same time, we are talking about, um, we are, we are talking about designing our Naira notes. Now, the only thing that comes to my mind is how do we manage the value? What value? is the des redesigning, bringing back to us. Sincerely, if we want to be straight and sincere with ourselves, redesigning the Naira note has more merits than the demerits. Sincerely. But I keep asking myself to date. And in the long run, I come to see a post on the social media from Senator Sani Shewu the senator from the central district in Kaduna State, he posted on an Instagram page that what shall it value, what profits or 
what shall it profit a naira colored and well designed and still loses its value i asked myself this is just exactly the thing i was thinking about that if we design a naira spending billions of naira ask our cbn how much was used to redesign this naira you will be amazed how much billions or trillions of naira they will pass across to nigerians this is is still a question i am yet to give answers to right in my mind but again let us look away from that and look at what benefits does it bring to nigerians so after receiving this invitation from mr wally i begin to research and find out package with what i imagine and i see that redesigning the naira it will in intensify the monitoring process meaning that it will help the commercial banks in conjunction with the central bank of nigeria to monitor the process how is our naira being spent the pro how is our naira moving out of commercial banks into the pocket of individuals and then it will interrogate the process of withdrawal again uh, talking about interrogating the process of withdrawals you and i will agree today and i think before i joined in i've been able to listen to some of the points from mr femi and i think we're on the same page in that on that note that there are so much billions of naira that individuals has deposited in their container under the ground and recently from the moment the redesigning of naira came up we have begun to see on social medias where people begin to show us naira that has been buried underground and had begun to decay this is a clear reason why the need to redesign our naira is paramount and important in the society today now another advantage i see in the angle of the uh, economic and financial crimes commission is that if they want to rise to their responsibilities this is the time they do not need to wait until they track individuals on social media or on their apps on whatever platform they have to track individuals it is easy for them to track in how individuals are withdrawing cash from the commercial banks already there is a minimum that the commercial banks has benchmarked that individuals can make withdrawals the economic and financial crimes commission at the moment should set up their track records should set up their monitoring units to follow up who and who how much are individuals pulling out from commercial banks in order to identify who is taking out what is beyond the limit as set by the central bank of nigeria i think this is important again and another advantage i see is that it's going to help in the area of uh, how the dollar is overriding our naira from wednesday when the new design note was launched if you follow the trends of dollar to naira you will discover that the dollar began to drop drastically two weeks ago i was also privileged to change dollars to naira and dollar was almost growing into 900 and something naira per dollar the moment the redesign information came up the dollar began to drop without looking back and within 
la two weeks ago and last week Wednesday, from 900 and something naira, the dollar had dropped to 700 and something naira. So it means that the redesigning of naira is doing so much good to our economy, more than what it is before. So I see that dollar is beginning to depreciate when our Naira is getting a new look. Well, the, all of these are my opinion based on my discoveries. Another advantage I see is that it's taking it, 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 the Naira, the redesign of Naira is beginning to tackle the excess of cash in circulation. From research, in the last one week again, I've also got to discover that there are about 80% of Naira in circulation. If we have 80% of Naira in circulation, then what do the, the remaining 20% has to offer when it comes to economy? So it means the commercial banks are... Uh, are are at risk of loss. I have not been a good follower of um, the business business news in on our commercial uh, television stations. But in recent times, for the period where I have been conversant with business news, you hear of downfall, you hear of depreciation, you will hear of uh, uh, weakness in naira to dollars but in the last one week the redesigning of naira i think it has come to play a major role when it comes to our economy and then talking about another advantage I, i've come to also discover that people with illicit money buried under the soil will have a change with it either they like it or not people are beginning to dig out whatever cash they have buried under the soil everybody wants to take their old naira to the commercial banks in order to get the new naira in few weeks or in the nearest month to come so it means that the moment that is done the commercial banks will have more cash within their purview and the uh, the general public will have uh, what we call uh, how, how do I put this? The commercial banks. Uh, what I'm trying to say is that the commercial banks will have more to do business with, and they can they will be able to monitor what is going into the individual pockets. That's another way to look at it. And I, I, sorry, I think I have more advantages. Like I said earlier, I, I am seeing more advantage to the redesigning than the disadvantages. And again, I look at another reason, uh, another advantage to the redesigning, is that the purpose is also, to, is also aimed at checking the increasing ease of risk of currency. Trust me. Uh, I, I think the uh, based on our the, the law the law guiding redesigning of naira notes should not exceed within five to eight years where the country is supposed to be redesigning their notes. But here we are, about ninety to twenty years ago was the last time our naira note has been designed. So this has given a huge opportunity for those. Who, 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 who want to uh, count, counter the Naira note? So many fraudsters today have been privileged to dig into what will it cost them to get the actual uh, Naira notes that Nigeria uses. And because the federal government has refused to redesign the notes, they take advantage of that. And they have been able to dig deep. And today, if you are not careful, a Nigeria will spend the fake notes to you. And you will not know. 
because they have been able to dig into the secrets, the codes that make it the authentic Naira note. They have been able to dig into all of that. But the moment a new Naira note is coming up, it, 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 is a, it, is, it means the, the, the Nigerian government has been able to, to penetrate into them and it is not a weakness for them. So they need to start researching afresh before they can dig into what will cause them to break into that edge again. And before they are able to dig into that, the government is, is expected to come up with another idea of designing a new code to bring up a new note. So this is all of my discovery. And before we round up again, I don't know if I'm taking time beyond expected. Yes, you are taking I time just... beyond the... You are taking oh, time. Okay. okay, I have just... Oh, I'll be giving you one, oh, two, two minutes now. Uh, oh, okay. Thank you. Okay. What yeah, is... Sure. Do you, do you see any special thing in the new Nera notes? And uh, within, I'll ask you the same question. Uh, I'll ask him the same question also. And uh, what are the disadvantages of the new Nera notes from the one we saw online? Okay, now from what I've been seeing online, to be honest, I've never heard the new Nera note. I've not held it, so I wouldn't say maybe it is polymer in nature or not. I don't know the kind of material they have used in doing it. Probably still the old form of material, or there's a tweak to the material. We have texture, probably they've increased the grammage, or they reduced the grammage, probably it's laminated or what. So I've not seen it. But from what we have just been seeing so far, it looks as if, uh, for those of us in the printing industry, that they just added cyan to the 1,000 round notes, they added magenta, to the uh, 200 Nera notes, and they also added uh, some uh, CM2 to the two, 200 Nera notes. So, all the currencies they just have a little bit of a uh, um, color mutilation, and then uh, some people say spraying, some people say coloring basically. So, I've not seen anything spectacular. I was actually expecting that the Nara would be redesigned, it to still have the same image, but. So far, so good. I believe that following the uh, the position of the U.S. because so far, so good. If U.S. are changing, the last time they changed their currency, they just have a little change, which was what I feel our CBN has also followed suit. And now, talking about the disadvantage, like I said earlier on, that this policy is either going to make us or mar us. If this policy is not properly monitored and implemented, Nigeria may be worse off than we were before. Now, I was given an instance of what happened in India when they changed their currency. In fact, they even gave them six months. Nigeria, we are giving four months for us to change our currency. They gave them six months in India. And because they also have large volume of cash, so it increased the pressure on the foreign exchange market. So a lot of people were converting their money to dollars. They were converting all their money to different foreign, uh, exchange, foreign currencies. And it added a whole lot of pressure on their economy. In fact, people don't even care about their local currency there. They were just putting money, changing their money to uh, to foreign currency, which affected their economy in the long run because number one, one of the reasons why you have to change your currency is to ensure that you reduce inflation. And how do you in reduce inflation? Now, you are trying to stiffen the foreign currency. Now, in the process of you stiffening, giving them stringent policy to ensure that people are discouraged, of depositing money or changing money to foreign currency. You created loopholes. Now, there is a lot of loopholes I'm seeing already. I'm only wishing that the central bank are also thinking in the right way that I'm thinking. Because if they're not thinking well, I can assure you that this policy is total rubbish. To be honest, now, what, what are the ways in which you can ensure that this thing is done? In fact, I was happy when I was hearing the rumor initially that the United States of uh, America wanted to change their dollars. They are, they are also redesigning their dollar. I say, yes, it means that is the right decision. In fact, I would not have said that there's any disadvantage. But now, the United States of America is saying that, no, they are not doing anything about uh, redesigning their currency. So which means that we are having a whole lot of problem in this country. You know, Nigeria, we are very smart. They are changing their currency. They are taking it to Ghana. From Ghana, they are sending it to different places. 
from Nigeria, they're taking it to Cameroon. So Nigeria, we are very smart, and then we are playing fast on the CBN as it stands. What can the CBN do? Because as it's going now, I can assure you by January, a whole lot of pressure is going to be on our Naira. In fact, they should do anything. The only solution now is to ensure that they reduce the volume of foreign currency in the market. Anybody that wants to assess foreign currency, it must be sent to them through electronic transfer. No more physical holding of dollars. If you need dollar, you have to open a DOM account. You have to send the money from DOM account. That is the only way. But with the way we are going, bros, we have not started though. Uh, like Yoruba used to say that KCKC KC, Lashiri, Kasakasa, uh, or Bakini, or Bakesekese. So let me interpret it in English. You have only seen case a case. So you should be expecting casa casa. <laughs> that's just that's just on a lighter note. Mm. But to be honest, that is all of the disadvantage. Number two, there are people that genuinely, genuinely, we have aged people that genuinely don't have bank accounts. Now, people like that. How do you work? Okay, now, for example, you have people that generally they do business, they have like 10 million in their house per time. How do you expect these people to go and drop 10 million naira? Or you want to tell them that, okay, I want to change this 10 million naira old note to the new note without them being investigated? You are going to open room for more litigation. Now, you start investigating. are genuine and not genuine we are going to go into another problem of litigation now litigation can take another extra month extra year for us to end litigation in the process of litigation we are also spending more money again monitoring people who are having their money genuinely and on battery the many times seen in this narrative design is that there is no collaboration between the CBN and other financial institutions in this country. Number one, the Ministry of Finance, for them to tell us that they are just hearing it on the pages of newspaper, just the way we are hearing it, means that this policy may likely fail. I'm not a prophet of doom, and I'm not praying for this policy to fail, but the policy may do or may likely fail because if you have Federal Executive Council, this thing should be discussed in Federal Executive Council. It wasn't discussed. So now you are carrying people that, you are not carrying people that should be carried along. Remember, only the monetary policy cannot help the government, cannot help our economy to grow. We need both the monetary policy and the fiscal policy. So that alone is also a demerit, which may likely make all this policy to be null and void in the, in the next coming months. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, uh, Mr. Olorode Luafemi. Oh, um, do you see? Let me ask you this question. He has answered one of the questions very well for me. Do you see? Oh, uh, what is? Do you see um, the new note and the old note? Somebody can suspend it as a counterfeit. Are you not seeing it in that way? Um. Okay. Thank you very much. In my opinion, looking at the way it is designed. I think there is a clear difference from the old 1,000 era to the new 1,000 era. The 200 era, era, the 200, 200 era notes the same, the 500 era notes the same. So I feel somebody should not be able to spend it as a counterfeit. But I, I think, basically, sincerely, what I think the CBN wants to achieve is to force the uh, is to force all notes back to the system, because like I said earlier about 80 percent of the no of naira notes are in circulation and you have just 20 percent at the bank so they are they need every means to force the notes back to the bank so that they can be a proper monitoring that is if they are able to achieve that i think another reason talking about security is that looking at the kidnapping and all of that we have today most of these kidnappers collect cash so it is important they frustrate those naira notes in the hands of these guys so that at least if not all they will be able to capture one or two when they are making efforts to send back these notes into the bank in order to get a new one i think these are just the basic reasons why i think there is a need to redesign the naira notes 
in my opinion. And talking about the disadvantages, I want to point about it, but just three points why I think it is going to be the, the, the merits of redesigning the Naira notes. And one of them is that the, talking about the business individuals, the genuine businessmen and women out there, the legitimate ones, it will affect their incomes. Trust me, it's going to affect the incomes of legitimate business owners. And again, this is a festive, we are entering the festive uh, season. It is risky for a festive season for such a thing like this to come up. We are entering into holidays. Trust me, it's a bad timing. Businesses are coming up. You also have individuals who do not have a bank account. Go to the core rural areas. You have people who are doing business and have just this cash. Before the new cash can circulate to that extent, it would have expired. The deadline would have elapsed. And what do we say about these individuals? So in my opinion, I think where would the... And again, the, the, I think the, the third point I'm going to be talking about to round up is that where would the fund for this redesigning come from? I am hoping that is not going to be from the borrowing funds. If we borrow funds for investments to build on infrastructures and what we, we pick out of it to, the, to redesign Naira notes, then that's not fair. That's bad for us as a country. So in all of this, these are just my opinion. These are the disadvantages I see in it. One, I recap again, talking about the, the legitimate business persons, talking about the individuals who are at the core rural areas, who are far away from banks, who have no bank ideas, whom trade their business in order to just get their money, retrade it, and, and recycle their funds like that. They don't have bank accounts. Before this new Naira note gets to them, the deadline for this uh, bank, this new redesign note gets to them, will have elapsed. So it means whatever cash they have with them will be useless at the end of the day. So that's a bad one for them. And again, where will the funding to the redesign this note come from? I hope tomorrow they will not tell us that they redesign 200 billion naira with the sum of 50 billion naira. I'm just hoping that. So these are just my fears, and I trust that God will help our nation. Thank you, okay. sir. Okay, and uh, what is your own last? I'm asking you, from Mr. Femi Olorode. What is? Are you there? What I'm is your you, own sir. take? We are rounding up the show now. What is your own take about your advice for Federal Republic of Nigeria? Okay, so the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I want to say that I believe before the, the CBN thinks of redesigning the Naira notes, there must have been sincere policies that must have been put in place. I, I use the word sincere. I'm hoping that they will be sincere with every policy they have identified. I want to, I want to advise that for me as an individual, I, I am seeing a larger part of merits to this redesigning. So for every policy that is guiding the redesigning of the Naira notes, the Central Bank of Nigeria, in conjunction with the Federal Government of Nigeria, should strive hard to keep to these policies so that the true benefits can materialize for all Nigerians to enjoy. And then it will also, that it, that it might also add a great value to our economy. These are just my take. Okay, bro. Thank you, sir. Left up, Marcus. What is your own take as we are rounding up the show as a, as a good advice for Federal Republic of Nigeria and a method, uh, the, the, uh, <clears throat> is it governor? I say it's governor of CPN, a method. Yeah. Yeah, my advice for the governor of Central Bank is to ensure that he sees that this policy becomes successful and he does not play politics with this policy and then it's going to be a good advantage to us like i said if we can ensure that we also introduce newer policy i as an economist i am suspecting if i am to be the cbn governor i will definitely introduce another monetary policy because this monetary policy i just introduced can only work effectively in fact if i'm rating it is less than five percent 
with this new policy and there is not going to go far out of 100 percent you are just you have just passed five this narrow redesigning is just five percent out of 100 if he did not introduce other monetary policy balance with the collaboration with the physical policy makers then nigeria should expect what is worse than what we're experiencing now so uh, my advice going forward is to introduce another policy whereby it's going to be electronic transmission or electronic uh, uh, sending of foreign currencies that is the way forward we need to eliminate black market in this country you cannot go to the united states of america and you start seeing people you know people that are not educated they don't even know what it takes you start seeing them selling forex on the on the streets of, of dallas i've never seen I go to Dubai, you don't see them. If you want to change money, you go to a corporate place and change the money, and the price is well regulated. So now we need to look at that, that foreign currency, because if you like redesign this era, people will still stack this money up. They don't mind collecting it for 1,000, for 5,000, keeping it until this money increase. That is how we do this country. So we need to reintroduce another policy that is going to balance it and that is going to ensure that this policy actually achieves its ultimate aim. And I want to pray that God will help the Federal Republic of Nigeria. God will bless this country, and this country will grow. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Okay, thank you very much, uh, great men that are uh, great men and brothers that are on the show. I'm, I, I'm grateful to you, my brothers, Mr. Femi Olorede. I'm grateful to you, my brother, my friend, thank you, sir. Uh, Mr. Femi Akinchola, and known as Petro Matas. Please, I want to, uh, a lot of people have come to me. Come and watch this live. Please, I want you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, The Voice. D E Voice. One two. The Voice. One two. Please visit our website, www.dvoice.com. D E underscore Voice. One two. And visit our Twitter, and a lot will be coming on on Twitter and do towards the first week of this month. We're going to come on on. Topic of politics and policy also. And uh, please, I'm grateful to every one of you. Join us tomorrow morning by 8 a.m. as joining me and Mr. Femi Olorode on discovering your purpose. Please, I'm very grateful to you guys. God bless you. God bless us, Nigeria, and God bless our God bless our family. Uh once again, I'm closing this program tonight. Say bye for everybody. Bye for now. Thank you. God bless our nation. Thank you, sir. All good right. night, Thank sir. Thank you, sir. All right. Good night. All right. Bye. Hello, everybody. My name is... Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Hello, everybody. My name is Adiwale. Welcome to The Voice. Thank you for coming to the show. It's many people that are following us on Instagram. Thank you. Thank you. Please visit our YouTube channel, DE on the DE, DE and voice. There is a space, DE and voice and voice 12. Please follow us on YouTube. Follow us on YouTube. Tonight we are talking about, uh, sorry, tonight we are talking on Nigerian debt. And the effects on our economy. Yeah. Tonight we are talking about Nigerian debt and the effects on our economy. Nigeria, Nigeria is one of the big country. Nigeria is one of the big country. Which are, we have a lot of debts. Nigeria is holding. Yeah. Thank you very much, my brother. Yeah. Thank you very much, my brother. Please send me a request if you are there, if you are hearing me. Pepped up matters. I should be waiting for Victor. Victor, Victor will join us very soon. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, bro. How are you, sir? Yeah, I'm fine. Good evening. Good evening. How is your day, sir? Yeah, very well. Thank God. Oh. Very well. I guess. Oh, bless God. Uh, Victor, just getting uh, the second person that is going to we are going to debate this topic with. 
just give give me an information that he will join us very soon, very very soon. Uh, okay. Please, can you introduce yourself to our audience that are watching you, sir? Yeah, my name is Femi Akinsholam, okay. and I, I am privileged to be invited to this great show today. <laughs> you are part of the you are part of the house now. Please, um, Victor, if you're online, please just send me a request. If you are the one online, please just send me a request so that I'll be able to know. I will accept the request. Today, today we are talking about Nigerian debts and the effects on our economy. What is your own view about uh, the debt that our country is owing now? Please, can you come again with your question? I said today we are discussing about Nigerian debt and the effects on our economy. What is your own view about the debt that our country is owing now? Okay, thank you very much for the question. Uh, I will start by saying that uh, when we talk about governance, there is no government in the world that is not indebted one way or the other. There is always a provision for that in any society of the world. You have to borrow because by the time, most of the time, most often as far as Nigeria is concerned, we've always run on budget deficits and they will never add the situation where we have budget surplus. And in order to cushion the effects of that, for us to have a balanced budget, we have to go borrowing. And then the more we borrow, the more we accumulate some debts, especially when we are borrowing for some things that we cannot use or for some things that is not necessary. For example, consumption. It is one of the worst way or one of the worst reason of borrowing. Because I tell people, you can't borrow for consumption. When Buhari came in, President Muhammad Buhari came in, most of the states were hoeing, and the most of them borrowed money. They were all shouting, hey, Paris fund, give us some of the money in Paris fund. Give us this, give us our derivative. He gave all of them the money, and then most of them used the money to pay salary. Mm -hmm. Because if you are talking about Nigerian debt, you have to look at it cumulatively. What is the debt ratio of each state? Because you have to look at everything in some total. Nigeria is not only Nigeria is existing alone, but Nigeria is Nigeria because we have other states that come together to make Nigeria. For example, President Wamodu Buhari took loan. He took some of the loan, and then what did he use with the, do with the loan? He used it to pay salaries of states, to help states to come out from their difficult situation. And that is where I want us to actually pinpoint tonight and to put a, a nail on this. Number one, Nigeria presently is indebted and uh, the, the, the debt is very alarming. I'm borrowing for infrastructure. He has been borrowing this money for infrastructure and for capital development. And that is what he has been doing. Fine. A lot of people are against it. And then I will also join the bandwagon by saying, okay, too much of debt is bad for a particular country. But in as much you are doing the right thing with this debt, then I believe definitely we are on the right path and we definitely achieve our goal. Now, what are the ways in which you can adopt to come out of this debt? That is one of the issues and one of the reasons I feel this program is organized that will be able to profile some positive solution from our own small point of view, be able to tell them, okay, fine, you are already in debt. Because one thing about me is that once I see a problem, okay, how do we tackle this situation? How do we tackle this problem? Which I believe is the way forward from here. Fine, Nigeria is in debt, but I believe we can come out of it. But how do we come out of it is the way we should be looking at now. I can't hear you. I can't hear you, your voice. Can you hear me now? I, 
Okay, okay, okay. Can you hear me? Fine, I can hear you now. Thank yes, you I can much. hear you now. Thank you very much for the thank you very much for the intro you are giving to us. What what is your from your uh, you as a person? Are you seeing Nigerian the debt, uh, the usefulness of the debt in the right way? Like I like I said earlier, some of the debt we have incurred we are used for the right thing, and some we are used for the wrong thing. But we just have to help ourselves from this situation. If a state government cannot pay salary, they have to cry to the federal government. Federal government has exhausted every fund they have. They've used their foreign reserve. They've gone to the Paris fund. They've used every money we have in our capacity just to ensure that we augment all these deficits we have. Remember, debt is necessary. And let me, let, me, let me pinpoint it or bring it to our day-to-day -day activity. For example, I run a business and there, there are some cases in which I have to go and take loan. Now, when you are taking loan, or why I am taking loan, for instance, I have never taken loan to pay salary before. I have never done that. I have never taken loan to say I want to buy something that I want to consume. No. I take loan for capital development. I take loan to buy machines. When you buy this machine, the machine is going to metamorphose and increase your own capacity to pay back the loan and at the same time, make more money. You understand? Now, some of the loan we have taken, to me, they are not necessary. Some of them are not necessary. But at the same time, when people are dying, your people are suffering, your people are dying. There, 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 there's an analogy somebody painted some time ago. He said, you have a family, you don't have anything to eat, and you have a token, but you want to use the token to invest in your business. But your family does not have what to eat. What will you do? Will you help your family, or will you use the money to invest inside your business? So, by the time Nigeria is stuck between these two devils, we have to go for the one that will benefit us. Because if your people die and you are building roads, so how will you use the money? Or who will benefit from the money you are using? So those are part of the issues in which I will not categorically say is a total failure. But, you know, at times when you have not stepped into a shoe, you may not be able to know how it pinches. Because it is those that wear the shoe that know how it pinches. So they have to balance the equation. I'm not talking in support of the current administration of the governance, but I'm trying to balance it from my own business point of view because I feel at times it is necessary for you to take loan, even for some consumption purposes at times. But at the same time, I will say most of the reason why this loan is being taken and actually not necessary, to be honest. And I wish we can look for a way to minimize it. And then, before I go ahead, when we are talking about debts, we have to segment it. There are two types of debts. We have the external debts and we have the domestic debts. Are you with me, sir? Yes, okay. yes, I'm with you. Uh, yeah, we have the external debts and we have the domestic debts. The external debt is the debt in which that, that is usually incurred when you borrow money from foreign countries or from foreign organizations like the World Bank or the IMF. And the domestic debt is the debt that is incurred locally. You know, there are ways in which you can also borrow money locally, either from a, a treasury bill, from bonds, or for, from private and public and private partnerships. Those are one of the means in which you can also source for loan. So I will, I will, I will encourage that we usually go for a domestic debt. Let's, let's borrow locally. Let's source locally. Find the federal government is actually doing its best by ensuring that we get loan locally. And that is one of the ways, or one of the reasons why we have the Sukkok bonds, which is a partnership between Sukkok. There are some infrastructure that is going on. Fine, they are doing it for all, but definitely we are going to pay back. And the interest rate is quite low. So going forward, I want us to look internally. How do we generate funds internally? How do we make more money internally? Those are the ways in which I, I believe we can definitely get loan and reduce our external debt because paying back external debts presently is more expensive compared to paying back internal debts or domestic debt. Because paying back external debt, you have to pay back in foreign currencies. 
because you borrow this money in foreign currencies. And you look at the dwindling, uh, uh, the dwindling forex exchange rate. By the time you borrow money at the rate of 500 and you are paying back at the rate of 600, currency does not make sense. So which is one of uh, why we say that let us look for internal ways of borrowing money or of raising funds. There are various means in which we can raise funds. So I would suggest to the federal government, let's put an end. Let's put a stop. Presently, we are at about 50 trillion naira. Those are that's the debt we have been cured, and we are even converting it into dollar. That's about uh, 40 something billion dollars. So that is huge for us. So, how do we pay back this money in foreign currencies? So, and our, the, the only way in which we can enjoy paying back this money is when our, 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 our foreign exchange is equal to that of our counterpart. If not, we will definitely pay more, we will be paying more, and it's so painful that we are in this situation, to be honest. Is very very painful, but I believe that with the right administration and the incoming government provided that we have someone that can provide a solution to this country. I'm not campaigning for anybody on this show, but I'm believing that we can elect somebody, a leader that will give us the drive and give us a, a, a reason why we must not borrow locally again, uh, externally again, because there's no way we won't borrow. It's not possible for us not to borrow. But let us minimize borrowing externally. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, you know that this today's one is all, only about the policy and politics. We are not talking. Yes, we are yes. not going to the. We are not going to politics properly. But from your own view, you are an economist. What is the way out of these debts? What is the way out? The solution is what we are looking for for this show. But I venture President Mohammed is looking at you now, and uh, oh, the Minister of Finance are looking at you now. Your own view also can go a long way. Bro, what is the way out? No, but one way out. I am a very realistic person. There are times that I just feel, okay, let me just put myself through some pain. Let us go through this pain together. Let us go through this pain together. Now, all this money we have borrowed, all this money Nigeria has borrowed so far, I can categorically say that 50% of the money we have borrowed are used for uh, reasons that is not economical to the country. As a matter of fact, 50% of the money borrowed was borrowed for and then uh, it was being embezzled by a politician. That is just it. By the time our money is embezzled, it will not see the effect in the Nigerian society. Now, there are some rules that loan was taken and then they embezzled the money. And the unfortunate part of it is that when it comes to capital project like road infrastructure, you have to pay your, uh, your vendor or the workers working for you. You have to pay them some percentage up front. There are times that due to some manipulation, they even pay some of them 100% up front. You know, when I had that, I was like, why will we do that? Then we have the Bureau of Public uh, Procurement. So that is the level we have found ourselves in this country. So going forward, I want to say the best way of going out of this debt is to stop taking loan for now. If you are going to die, let us die. I believe you are not going to die. We are going to live. Let us do what? Stop taking loan for now. That is number one solution. Number two, let us stop some frivolous spending. And number one frivolous spending I'm going to mention is subsidy. Let us put a total stop to subsidy. Enough of petroleum subsidy. Let us put a total stop to the petroleum subsidy. By the time we put a stop to the petroleum subsidy, for like three months, the money we are meant to use to pay subsidy, we can use it to offset some loan. That is number one. Number two, can we increase the tax net? Can we increase the number of people that are paying taxes? Can we generate more revenue? And then as you are generating more revenue, can it be used for the reason for which it is generated? That is another way forward. Let us increase capacity, increase, increase the tax net, 
bringing more people to pay taxes. And as they are paying taxes, let us ensure that this money is not embezzled. It is one reason, or it is one point for you to raise money. It is another point entirely for the money to be used for the right reason. And that is where the problem is in this country, as it is. That is where the problem is. When Baba today found that like came, it generated a lot of revenue. Uh, Amit Dali came, custom, it generated a lot of revenue. But at the same time, we just spent this money for frivolous purposes. This money, we can say, okay, for the next three months, let us use this money let us to offset this particular debt. So let us increase the tax rate. Let us increase our internal generated revenue. Let us generate revenue and use it to offset some of this loan while you are using some of them for capital infrastructure. Number three reason or number three ways in which we can offset and come out of these debts is simply reducing the cost of governance. We need to reduce the cost of governance totally. And I will appreciate it if Governor President Muhammad Dubari or the incoming president, whichever one is going to adopt the Orasai report. Orasai report has given us solution to some of the problems we are facing. We need to reduce the cost of governance. The money we are spending on different ministry agencies is too much. At times I'll be driving on the road and I will say some place number. I'll be seeing some ministries that I've never had before. And I'll be, and some, uh, sorry, I'm some past starters. I'll just be like, ah, where is this person coming from? Who is financing this past starter? And all the vehicles they are using, they are luxurious vehicles. You know, vehicles of 30 million. It does not make any sense. It does not make what any sense. So we need to reduce the cost of governance. Let us make government less lucrative for politicians. When you are coming to governance, you know that you are coming there to contribute your quota. It should not be a place whereby you now come and say that, okay, this is where I'm going to get rich. No, government should not be like that. Governance should not be like that. It can only come to governance to help the country. What are you bringing into the table? So we need to reduce our spending on some of the ministry. Let us collapse them. By that time, we will have enough money. And we can say, okay, this money we are having in surplus now. Let us divide them. Part of it, let's use it to offset some of the external debt. And number four ways in which Nigeria can come out, out of this debt is to definitely apply for a soft landing and debt waivers. I want us to know today that it is a common standard. I am I, I am under President Obasanjo. They gave us some waiver on some of the loan that was incurred by Nigeria. So we can definitely apply for that. But we can't just apply for that if they see that we are not serious and if they see that we are not ready to pay this money. We need to apply for it. We can, let us apply. Okay, please, can you give us a debt waiver? And they definitely, I believe that they are going to give it to us. So those are my little, little solutions in which if we can adapt it, I believe the, the, the future is going to be bright for this country. Okay, thank you very much. We are talking about the debt waiver that happened during this uh, over general, uh, President, President Obama. President Obama. Yes. Are you seeing it that it can happen now? Because the people are giving us, are they going to just give us a debt waiver without no any return? Okay, now, see, there is what we call negotiation in governance. In fact, before they gave us debt waiver, it wasn't as if they just gave us debt waiver like that. There was some exchange, you understand. We gave them something in return. That is the truth. There are some negotiation which I don't want us to go into that now. It is part of governance. You have to negotiate some things. We have a lot of resources we can use to negotiate. That's just the truth. We have what? Enough resources. Okay, look at the CCEC, which is the Chinese construction company. Presently, there is a, there is a partnership between Nigeria and the CCEC. They, they were the ones that built our airports, all the international airports. By God's grace, I was opportune to be at, uh, to be in some of those international airports, and I, I was part of those who did some work while the airport construction was going on there. You know, I, I can say that there was a partnership. Now, we have invited them to come and build this airport, and we are also giving them some things, some natural resources in return. You know, one, one way in which we can get them to invite is to give them what you have. Okay, I do something in business. And then let me just share it briefly here. I was about to embark on a particular project, and then I'm not going to mention on the project, and I made the person 
that I feel it can give me what I want. And I told him, boss, I need this project. I need this thing to be done. But I don't have money. But this is what I have. So there was an exchange. You negotiate. Negotiation goes on anywhere and everywhere in the world. We can just say, okay, look at our crude oil now that is being uh, stolen every now and then. You can just tell them, okay, we are going to give you one vessel of crude oil. Forfeit our loan. Forfeit it. So we have a lot of resources. Look at our Jalkota steel. You can tell them, okay, we want to give you some limestone. We want to give you some iron ore. We have a whole lot of mineral resources that we can use to negotiate. That's just the truth. A whole lot. Nigeria is endowed. It is my problem now is that if you say Nigeria, if you say we want to go through this, you will say, okay, let us set up a committee. As you are setting up a committee, you tell them that let's give them one vessel. The person, the chairman of the committee, will already be saying that ah, this vessel, I'm going to take care of it. They frustrate it. There's no transparency. Then everything is just is just bottled up. And it's so painful because at times, even if the government have good intention, we the people, we are the cause of this thing. We are the cause. It's so painful. You know, I wish I can be at the end of power to be able to collect some things. Because we have to put an end to this bullshit. A, a whole lot. President Wari came in with a good intention. But the people, the, 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 the directors, the pump sec, the ministers, in fact, the civil servants, the public servants, they frustrated all his ambition, all his lofty ideas because of their selfish reasons. And that is only my fear when we are saying we want to negotiate this. But I believe that if you have a good structure, if we can put our brains together and pinpoint the areas in which we can negotiate, I believe some of our loans can be offset. Some of them can be offset, to be honest. It's possible. Okay, thank you very much for that place you took us to. Uh, I'm looking at now, we are discussing and deliberating more on the way out now. You have mentioned we have a lot of resources in this country, but the way, the way we are handling it is not fair. Uh, is it yeah. proportional for us to, we can negotiate, and also in the process of our negotiation, we can also, can we also start up private sector? I think that government is supposed not to be running a business. Are you not seeing it as the, like, let me say, in the area of the crude now? If we, we did not go, for, refinery is not working, can we set the refinery to private sector? Are you seeing that if the refinery will be, or NFC is sold to a private sector, is it not going to be far better and productive than now? Okay. Uh, I, will, I will not say yes, and I will not say no. You understand? We cannot sell all our critical assets. We cannot privatize all our criti uh, critical assets. You understand? It is a lofty idea that, okay, let us privatize the NPC. Let us have the private sector to control it. But a serious government will not allow people or the private sector to control everything. You cannot allow that. The only thing you can allow is the public and um, private uh, coming together partnership, the public private partnership, both of them coming together to synergize. Now, look at Transcorp. Now, Transcorp eating was being run by governments some years ago, but presently the government has reduced its shares. Government still have shares in Transcorp eating. You understand, it's still a public and private partnership, but they gave the private sector the edge, and they are the one running the administration. And we can see that Transcorp Eating is one of the best hotels in Abuja. In fact, in the whole of Nigeria, anywhere you see eating, they are one of the best. Now, that is an example. On the other hand, there are some critical infrastructure, critical things that we cannot just uh, say we want to have a concession. Look at the power sector now. Look at the power sector. Now, the government says, okay, we we have the Jenkos, we have the discourse, we have the, uh, the, the, the transmitting companies. They are voting the uh, private sector to come and see how they can synchronize and make sure that they provide a good service. But now, the, uh, the process of synchronizing it, the process of concessioning it, we can see a lot of fraud that came into play. A whole lot of fraud came into play. I want to ask you a question, and I want you to be sincerely honest. When our electricity distribution company was still 
called uh, Power Holding Company of Nigeria. And now, have you seen any significant difference? The answer is what? No. These people are generating money. The discords are generating money. And where is the money going to? It's going to their pocket. How much is the government making? They will say that they are not getting a lot of transmission. Now, they are giving you transmission. They are transmitting. Where is the money? I just, for example, I just bought a new meter in my house. And the meter goes for 119000 A new meter. I still have to pay for this meter. We just bought a new transformer in our estate. We contributed the money to buy it ourselves. And if you call them to come and repair, we will still pay for the repair. And, and they are the ones enjoying it. They will never give us waiver. So those are some of the, uh, uh, the, 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 the negative effects of having uh, a public and private sector partnership. Not really a public and private uh, sector partnership, but having our critical infrastructure handed over to these people is going to cause us a whole lot of problems, a whole lot of issues. If you like, you protest from now to tomorrow, nothing will happen. If that person that if the discourse said they are not giving you light, that is it. So in when it comes to NMPC, fine, it is now presently NMPC is now a limited liability company. Because NMPC was turned to a limited liability company about two months ago. And that is a way for a, a, a good one for the federal government. They have done well by doing that, by giving the society the privilege to also buy into it. It can invest into it. It can be a shareholder now. It is now being listed on the stock exchange. So it's, it's, a, it's a good one. It's a good one. And I believe it's going, to, it's going to push us to be better. And when you go to the issue of refinery, presently we are hoping that maybe early next year we are going to have our Dangote refinery working. By the time the Dankode refinery comes up on stream, I believe it's going to reduce the pressure. Are we having to export our crude oil out of the country? And then see, we start the, the, the local refinery. It's really going to help us. We are going to save a whole lot of foreign currencies. That is on one aspect. On the second aspect, are we, I'm of the opinion that the government should try and put, if it is only one refinery in operation, if it is only the Portacult refinery or the Cardinal refinery, we can put into maximum operation. Let it be operating maximally. And let us put our best to ensuring that, okay, this uh, refinery works perfectly. Because I don't want a situation whereby we are going to rely only on the refinery of Alaji Aliko Dangote. And remember, Alaji Aliko Dangote is enjoying a tax-free uh, project. Most of the facility he got, the land he's using, most of them were given to him at a, at a token. That is just the truth. So the government has also encouraged him to, for him to build the refinery, but at the same time, we, don't, we should not rely on him. God forbid, what if there is a problem with his refinery in the future? What if you want to do an overhauling? What if you want to do a repair? I think mean, we should have another plan. So I want the government to also intensify efforts by ensuring that our own refinery that is being owned by the government is also working optimally. And we should ensure, that is my problem with this country, we should ensure, and once again, we should ensure that this refinery is being monitored. It should not be a miss for embezzlement. It should not be a miss for corruption. I want everybody to please join our hands together and let us have our refinery working. And totally, there's what we call modular refinery. President Yomi Obasanjo, uh, Vice President Yemi Oshibajo. Oshibajo. Sorry. Yeah, Oshibajo. He was part of the pioneer and he went into the creek of the Niger Delta to ensure that we have our modular ref refineries working. Fine. He came up with a laudable idea, but you can see some of the discovery we saw in, in some few weeks back. Some of them have connected the modular refinery to their grandfather's village. From there, they are connecting it to a vessel. They have turned it to, 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 to a business that they feel that it is their national cake and they can use it for any reason. So it is, we have a lot of ideas, but at the same time, we are still the ones frustrating these ideas. We are the one, we, 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 me and you, are going to put us into the system, into the situation, because if 
each and every one of us begin to say the right thing. We begin to see something and say something and stop people from doing the wrong thing. I believe we are going to get there. When, uh, we are going to get there very soon. Thank you very much. Okay. Yo, Victor, it's like we're on live. Please, can you send me a request? We are closing the show very soon. We have like 15, we have like just seven minutes to close the show. Please send me a request. I have, I, you, you have been, I've been seeing you online. Oh, back to you again. You Thank know you, that sir. all this idea, all this idea that was initiated during that modular refinery. Is there any way that there can be a good, a good negotiation about our modular refinery? And number that that is number one. Maybe a good negotiation. And apart from that, can we think behind crude oil? Nigeria is blessed. We have land. We have we have we have land. We have gold. We have all. We have nothing. We have human resources, like China now. China is very, very productive. Can we put ourselves also in that way also? Okay, let me let me let me start from your first question, negotiating the modular refinery. The truth of the but matter sorry, is, when I when I say negotiating the modular refinery, putting it in a process like if I have money now, I can go to government, call for license. Do the modular refinery in maybe a two okay in a Baesa or in any place part of the Portacourt, and there should be a way that government can see how much could they are giving me, how much am I producing. Is there any way it can work like that? And no, you know that if, you are doing, if you are doing a modular refinery, you employ two or three persons in the community. All of your workers yes. will not be outside of the country. Yeah. Okay, now this is this is this is how it goes. Eh, you cannot just say you want to start refining anything. You have to refine something, and that is crude oil. Now, how do you get this crude oil for refining? That's number one. What is the process? What is the process of you getting this crude oil? The process number one is cumbersome. That is number one. Now, number two, if they give you the license. To get or to operate modular refinery, crude oil. and when you buy crude oil, you now bring it to your refinery for it to be what to be refined. Now, what do most people do? They go and steal this crude oil, and they refine it, and they they are making money only for themselves. That is the problem. They're working. But what, we, what do we do? Government has given you license for modular refinery. What are you meant to do? You are meant to do or to buy it and also for, so that the government can make money. That is the essence. When you buy from the government, government make money, then you refine it and also sell it to the depot or to end users, whichever way you want to sell. That is the way it should go. But the problem is that we are uh, we are going to give them the license, and they go ahead and steal and sabotage it. Now, the only way now, in fact, before we say we want to go into modular refinery, the only way now is to secure our crude oil. Our pipeline must be fully secured. We need to ensure that these people do not have the capacity to go and steal crude oil. That is the number one solution. Bros, if you have modular refinery, I can tell you today, that people will bring crude oil. And you would think they buy it, but most of them are stolen. I was having a conversation with somebody um, some few weeks ago. And he said, ah, man, Mr. Femi, let me introduce you to this uh, crude oil business. So there's a way we used to do it. So we have to go into the creeks. We will go and break the pipe. We, 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 we get the crude oil and we move. We go and sell. You understand? So that is the current problem we are having. So even if you say you want to negotiate, how sure are you that these people are not to be and steal and be refining? So now, government is losing on both ends. You gave them license, and are, they are using the license to sabotage our government because the crude oil they will be stealing, they may not take more than maybe um, 10 barrel, 20 barrel. That is how they'll be taking it. It's not as if they'll be carrying a vessel. So from there, they'll just refine that one, sell it. They'll be selling bits and bits. And that is the current problem we are having. So which I believe we need to address the issue of that crude oil before we say we want to move forward to uh, negotiating with them. 
we have to just deal with that problem. If that problem is not solved, then there's no end, uh, there's no end in sight for this lingering problem. That is number one. Number two, he said, how do we, we need to look beyond crude oil. That is just the truth. Like I said, that we have a whole lot of mineral resources in this country. We have gold. We have, uh, look at Nasarawa. They have gold. Look at Zafara. Look at other states. We have, we have quality things, quality mineral resources. Look at the agricultural sector. Just about three days ago, Ghana has placed an embargo or a ban on the importation of rice into their country. This is an opportunity for us. Thank God for the initiative of President Muhammad Bori to be growing rice locally. Now, our, 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 our people here in Nigeria can now start exporting rice to Ghana because they don't want to buy from any other place again. They are ready to only buy from Ghana because we are West African. So there's a um, there's a diplomacy and a, a contractual agreement between uh, uh, among all these West African countries. So we can easily export to them, and we are going to make money. So we need to look beyond crude oil, which is uh, which is long overdue. We need to adopt technology. We need to adopt our agriculture. Let us invest more in agriculture. Number three, we need to go and enhance our, our our mining sector. We have a whole lot of illegal miners. Mining gold, uh, about three days ago, somebody sent me some gemstones that they were mining in Ogun State. Imagine Ogun State. They discovered some gemstones. In fact, I am very sure that the government is not even aware. Or probably they are even aware and they are also making money. I asked the person, where did you get these gemstones? They said, ah, then this is money. Let's make money. But I, I am not someone like that. I have to turn the offer down because I believe that the government should be the one that should be controlling this, that should be regulating it. So the relationship of the of the government with the with, with, with the people should also be something we should be pushing forward. A lot of people are saying that okay, fine. If I discover gold here now and I tell the government, the government will just take over the gold. The person in charge is going to make money and forget them. So when they discover that the government itself is corrupt, the people themselves will feel, okay, this is my own tunnel, this is my way of making money. Let me just make this money, make this gold, get all these gemstones, and they run away. That is number two uh, ways. And number three, we need to start investing in human capital. In human capital. In the United States of America, there's a place they call uh, Silicon Valley. And you see people going there. That is where they raise genius. Genius like Mark Zuckerberg. They emerge from where? From Silicon Valley. We need to develop our technology up because that is the way forward now. Thank God for some of people that have embraced robotics. Some of them have explained, uh, uh, they, they have embraced UX design. They have embraced a lot of coding. Let us invest more in human capital. And I'm not going to say this for uh, to cause any religious uproar today. But I have to say this. We need to put a stop, especially the Nigerian youth, to all this night vigil, prayer and fasting, going to church every now and then. You know, most of us, we have decided to lock our brain. We have locked our brain, believing that God will solve the problem for us. No, God is not going to solve the problem. He has given us the capacity to solve. We are the one that God will use to solve this problem. It is not in that line VG that you are going that you solve the problem. Let us go all out. I was seeing, uh, I was watching a video about two days ago. I was seeing young people in China and juxtaposing it with young people in Nigeria. You see them in China. You see young people embracing technology. They are deep in the things. And that is what is giving them an edge. But where do you see our youth? You see that if you do not see them in Shiloh, you see them in redemption camp, you see them in Holy Ghost night, you see them in churches. How about? God is not as difficult as that. Let us use our brain. And I want our religious leader to also encourage. Let us encourage our people. Don't let us think that everything is devil. Everything is devil. It is not devil. We are our own devil. We have the only of churches in this country. But where have we found ourselves? We have found ourselves in the abyss among the committee of the world. So we need to embrace technology, embrace the human capital. Let us go all out. Let us study. Let us invest. Let us make this mandatory for our churches to begin to say, okay, don't come to church more than one hour or two hours in a, in a, in a week. Go and learn. Invest in yourself. Develop yourself so that you can develop this country. And that, and that, I believe, is going to help us going forward. 
I will not. I will not to agree with you. I was not going to judge or not be BG. I'm not uh, going to to church. We should reduce the number of hours of going to church. Let us work. Let us do what work. Even the Bible says that uh, when when God created Adam and Eve, God always visited them in the evening, in the cool hour of the day. But you can see my people, they will they, they will go uh, they will go to the mountain. Forty one days. What happened? Our church is very close to us, and our Allah is very close to us, depending on our understanding. Please let us let us be objective. I know I'm a pastor, but we have to address this once and for all. I will, I, may, uh, I, 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 I will not say that we should not go to work, and we should, we should not go to work, and we should not go to church. We should balance it. We should balance it. Yes. We should balance it. We should balance it. It is good to serve God. He has his advantage, and uh, everything is good. I, I enjoy I'm a, people that said God. I'm a, I'm a worker in my church, uh, hey, but at the same time, I have to say the truth. That's just it. And that is my own point uh, of view. My truth may be forced from on your head, but I believe that is the gift for Okay, thank you very much, please. Uh, we are closing the show now. What is your own take on? What, what, what is your own life's last advice? I think. Oh, Victor is trying to chat me up in WhatsApp, but I cannot connect to WhatsApp now because anytime we are on live, I cannot do anything. I cannot receive call. Oh, what is your own take home as we are landing up the, the the program? What is your own, what is what is your own advice for Federal Republic of Nigeria? We have said all, but in a brief word, in a one sentence, what is your own advice now? In conclusion, are you a, okay? Okay. In conclusion, I will just say that the government needs to be transparent. Once the government is transparent, you know, there are some things that we put in place. Now, we need to have the government buy-in. Now, if I tell you that there is a new policy that the government just introduced, you that I know, you will say, hey, this thing is a lie. It is a scam. The government has started. They want you to embezzle. That is the mindset of 90% of people. We don't have confidence. We don't have trust in our government. Let them develop the trust by being transparent. And I will encourage everybody, as soon as you are a citizen of this country, let us contribute to the development of this country. Let us give our best. Don't let us say that, ah, it is national kick. I must take my own share. No, we should not say that. Let us believe in this country. Let us support this country. Let, just, let, let, let us drive this country forward. And I believe with that, this country is going to be a good place for all. And above all, for those that are jackpying, please don't forget the son and daughter of who you are. Represent this country anywhere you are. Because it's also going to add to our credibility as a country. A lot of us have jackpied from this country. Look at what happened in Dubai. And then they have tainted the image of Nigeria in Dubai. Imagine me having my money, I can't travel to Dubai. You know, it's so unfortunate. It's so, so unfortunate. So we are, we are, we are actually, we are actually the one causing problem for ourselves in this country. So I'm going to encourage both the citizen and the government to be transparent because this in the long run has a, an effect on our economy on its own. And finally, I want to say this. Um, I, Pastor Nathan Bassi said something. He was, he was at the airport. I think uh, it was at Dallas. It was, uh, somebody, the people he went to ministered with, they booked a ticket, a business class ticket for him. And then he was about to board the plane and they stopped him from boarding the plane. And do you know what they asked him? They asked him that, can he show them the credit card in which he used to pay for the tickets? Because he's in Nigeria and they believe he's a fraud. And he was like, no, I came to minister in this country. Your people in this country were the ones that booked the ticket. In fact, you almost missed the flight. They have to call the people that invited him to come and minister in the United States of America. So you can see that our, our image is as worse as that, that they don't believe in us again. They don't believe in our credibility again. And it's very impossible and it's always becoming impossible for Nigerians, for some of us that have something to offer to sell ourselves out into countries. For them to give us, we have something, we can offer you something because of the image, bad image projected for this country. And that's one of the reasons why investors are scared to come to this country. So 
going forward, both the government and the citizenry, we have work to do. About peace, let us put an end to scamming. Let us stop defrauding people. Let us use our brain in the right way. Let us work for the best interest of the public of Nigeria. Let us work for the posterity and let us put our conscience to work. Don't let us kill our conscience because of the quick money you want to make. And to the government, please be transparent, be truthful to your word. Let people see what you are doing. Let people see that our money is being used for the right purpose. And our politicians should please, for the sake of God and for the sake of the masses, let us make policies and let us do the right thing for this country. Thank you very much. And I pray that the Lord shall bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria and the Lord shall bless the voice and bless everyone watching this show. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. A lot of people are watching this show. People are coming in from different places. I'm grateful for as many people that are, who are watching this show from far and near, even from the diaspora. I'm, I'm grateful for everyone of you. I'm seeing you here. I'm grateful for everyone of you. Please, before we are closing up the show, please can you mention your name to the public and what you do? My, my, my name is Akin Shola Olofemi. I'm a press and brand strategist. I have an office called Fepto Markers Nigeria Limited located in Abuja. We are into printing, branding, and consultancy. Thank you very much. You are, you are not a visitor in this show. You are part of the show. Thank you very much. I name my humble self, Adewale. Please visit our website, www.thevoice12.com. You know the spelling of the voice, D E. Voice, please visit our YouTube. This show, this show we posted on our YouTube. This our YouTube, the voice space, D E, and voice one two. Uh, visit our Twitter handle, the voice. Visit our Instagram, D E underscore voice one two. Please, I remember humble self. Uh, God bless, God bless the Federal Republic of Nigeria. God bless everybody. Uh, my friend, my brother, laptop markers. Please, I'm grateful for having you on this show. Thank you for coming. God bless you. God bless your own. God bless everybody. I will Amen. say to you. So tomorrow, tomorrow we are discovering your purpose will be in the night while Emmanuel will be taking us in discovering your purpose in the night. That is 9 p.m. Thank you, everybody, for coming to the show. God bless you. God bless our nation. God bless Federal Republic of Nigeria. Bye for now. Bye. Welcome to the voice. My name is Adewale. Today we are talking about sports. Welcome everybody. Uh, grateful for the gift of life. As many people are joining us. Thank you, thank you, thank you everybody for coming by. Thank our loved ones. Grateful today we have. We are going to have for Chiki Mami. I'm going to have Kochiki in the live here. Yeah. Thank you, Kochiki, for coming. I'm waiting for Kochiki. Kochiki, please, can you send me a request? Kochiki, please, send me a request. Please, Kochiki, please send me a request. Kochiki, send me a request. I am a little bit alive. Thank you, everybody. Kochiki, if you are there, please just send me a request. Okay. Send me a request, Kochiki. Hello, sir. How are you? Oh, good evening, sir. Hi, sir. Hi, everybody. Hi, family. Family is good. We thank God, sir. Okay. Today we are we are discussing about oh, uh, mash. Uh, ah, wow. 
Is it up Nepal or down Nepal? <laughs> is it too, sir? <laughs> okay. Oh, we are discussing about Ronaldo being betrayed by Manchester United. Okay. Please, can you introduce yourself to our audience first? Okay. Um, my name is Ibrahim Abdulmalik. I'm a graphic designer and a football enthusiast. Thank you very much, Abdul Malik, for coming to the show. Coach K, please, if you are there, please just send me a request. I'm trying to get in touch with you. She, Coach K, please, if you are there, just send me a request so that I will bring you life. I, I, I think that maybe you will lost the contact. Okay, you have sent me the request. Sorry, Abdul Malik. No, it's fine. Sorry, I'm trying to put him live. Uh -huh. As we are waiting for Kochike, Abmalik, what is your own view of Ronaldo? Okay. Kochike, up Lepa, or down Lepa from your own side. Hello, Kochike, are you there? Yeah. Kochike, are you there? Uh, uh, hello, actually, are you there? Lies here. There is no problem. That is Nigerian for us. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm here. I'm with you. Good evening. Okay. Good evening, sir. Please, can you introduce yourself to our audience? Yeah, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Can you introduce yourself yeah. to our audience? I'm with you. Okay. Can you please introduce yourself to our audience? Mm -hmm. Coach, okay. you My name is Coach Obona. Uh, my name is Coach Chibike Obona. Okay. Thank you very much, Coach. Ab Malik, to you. What is your own view about? Ronaldo, uh, still Ronaldo speaking like that to my coach. Um, good evening once again. It's I I don't know how to put it in words, but it's a feeling that if any of any human being is put in, we we'll all react. Um, Ronaldo has reached a feat that many footballers have not, even though many have tried their best and they play football and all. But many players have not reached where Ronaldo is. And just last season, Ronaldo was the best player in Manchester United. So when this yeah. new coach was assigned, was um, was given the job, Cristiano was very happy to some extent. He, he was not happy, actually. He was not happy and he felt he, uh, Manchester United had the, had the authority or they commanded the ground to hire a very higher coach to who they actually hired. So from there there was a, there was an issue. You understand? But somehow somehow Ronaldo wanted out and they did not give him that chance to go. So okay, he's under contract, he had to stay. Now every time that the coach had to speak to the media he has always been saying that ronaldo is very important to him even before leaving ayas he used to say it that ronaldo is very important and he's looking forward to working with ronaldo and all that now when the issue of ronaldo was trying to build up on, he still keeps saying that he wanted ronaldo to play for him he wanted ronaldo to be in the team ronaldo is very important now season has started ronaldo has stayed Season has started. You are keeping this man on the bench. This man was the best player for Manchester United last season. He was scoring goals every almost every match. He had more than 20 goals last season. So if you feel like you are not okay with this person, while the transfer window was open, you should have just allowed the man to go. Now, this treatment doesn't mean Ronaldo has the right to speak the way he has spoken, no. But he was pushed. So that's my own opinion. Okay, okay, to you. Coach Ike, are you there? 
Kochi, are you there? I want to ask, Kochi, are you there? It's like we lost. It's like we lost from him. Back to you again, as we are waiting for Kochi. What is your own view? And wait forward for Manchester United and Coach and the and Ronaldo. Okay. Um. I think the best way to actually put all this matter to rest is to allow Ronaldo to go. And I think uh, news just broke this evening that Cristiano, I mean, Manchester United are looking for the best way to terminate his contract. Um, I think that's the best way to go about it. Just let them find the middle ground. Before now, that's what they should have done. Before now, I think even before the season started, Manchester United was still, was still looking for a way to get more money out of his deal and everything. But I think the best thing they will have done by then and now is to just terminate his contract and let him go. So that him, he can find... It will be a win-win for the two of them. I can assure you that one. It will be a win-win. Ronaldo will be able to go to a club that he wants, to see a coach that he respects, to play the football that he wants. And at the end of the day, Manchester United will be a better team also. There will be no distraction. There will be no... Uh, media focus on them and they'll be able to train well and play good football. So I think the coach has a very good intention for the team and he has been doing very well even without Ronaldo. So I think they are going to be better off allowing him to go on a free. Just let the contract just end. Look for it. the best way to just terminate the contract and allow him to find a new uh, team for himself. So I think that's just the best way to go about it. Okay, Kochi, are you there? Yes, I'm here. I'm with you. Okay, as a coach, as a coach, is Ronaldo being fair enough to speak to as a coach? Is Ronaldo being fair enough to speak like that on media to the to his coach? Um, to me, no. Do you understand my question? No, oh, no, it's not fair. <laughs> Yes, yeah, I can, can hear you. Go ahead. There is no fair for him to talk to, spoken to him in that manner. You get? Yes. Can you give us an explanation why he's supposed not to speak like that? Uh, every coach, every coach has the right to what uh, Manchester United current manager is doing. Everybody has the right to do what he's doing because Ronaldo feels that he's a better player than ever. Hello, Kochi case live. We cannot hear you very well. Oh, Ab Malik. Are Malik, are you there? Yes, I'm with you. Oh, um, can you please explain you if you are if you are in a coach as a coach and or as a manager of a team? Are you seeing him being fed for a senior player to speak to you like that? Look at his own <laughs> caliber. Yes, you are. Um, you are. You are very. I like that question. Now, as a coach, there are some things that you try as much as possible to avoid. And also, you try as much as possible to lay some rules and regulation to your players. Nobody is above the team. That's why they call it a team. Nobody should be above the team. No matter who you are, no matter what you have done, no matter what you have achieved in life, everybody is supposed to be together. And they're supposed to play together. But there's one thing about being a player and about being a coach. About being a coach, there is no way you will make everybody happy. Is not possible because you cannot you cannot play everybody at the same rate or you cannot give everybody the same game time so definitely there will be some people that will not be happy in your team but it's your responsibility as a coach to make sure that if there are some people that are not happy in the team as a player you find a way to make them know that they are part of the team even though they are not playing you make them understand that they are part of the team now, no matter what Ronaldo has said about the coach, he's not, I don't think he's in the right position to question the coach the way he has done. 
he doesn't have that right. Like, I don't even think he has any right to do so. There are plenty of players that have been in his shoe. Maybe not on his calib- not uh, at his caliber or at his stage, but plenty of players have gone through that. Now, there is a player that I listened to one day. I, I saw uh, this Asana um, All or Nothing. There is a player, Rob Oden. He was asked, why, do you, why are you always smiling, even though you are not playing? He said it's a gift for him alone to be playing football and be earning money. That is a gift already. That Why should he not be happy? But you can't find two or three players that are like that. Some players want to achieve things. Ronaldo, everywhere he has been, he wants to be at the center stage of everything that your football is doing, your club is doing, I mean. Anything that is happening to your club, you want to be at the center stage, you want to be at par with it, you want to be going as your club, as your team is being successful, you want to be successful with it. That's who he is. And he's supposed to be known that this is who this man is. You are supposed to see it. The, 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 uh, the history, the story, everything is there right from the beginning of his life. When he was a man, you, the old, everything that is happening in Manchester United was around with Cristiano Ronaldo. When he left for Real Madrid, the same thing, everything was, that was happening in Real Madrid was, was going around Cristiano Ronaldo. So, you should know as a coach that there are some people that if you want to make them happy, you have to keep them on the pitch. There are some people that even if you keep them on the seats or the bench, they can still be happy to some extent that if you call them to come and perform, they will still put all their best and play good football for you. So, it's left for the coach to decide if somebody is there for you to stay and play football for you or not, then you allow them to go and you bring in new people. What I see is Cristiano Ronaldo's body language from the beginning has always shown that he's not ready to play under this man. And the man should have seen it that this guy is not ready to play under me and should have allowed him to go during the summer. So that's just it. Okay, Kochike, if you are still there, please send me. I've sent you a request. You can say I sent the request. But actually, I was talking to somebody today who was telling me that Cristiano Ronaldo is being selfish. You see him be selfish from your own view? Um, in my own view, every successful person in this life is selfish. <laughs> you have to think about yourself first. Because if you think about the next person first, then <laughs> you will not have achieved what you have achieved. Christian Ronaldo has scored more than 700 goals today. He, if he is not being selfish, he won't score up to that. I don't know if you, are, if you understand what I'm saying. There are sometimes he's a striker. A striker is expected to be selfish. If you're not selfish as a striker, what are you doing on the pitch? You're expected to score goals. Nobody is asking. If it's, it's like asking a midfielder, why are you giving passes? It's their job. It's like ask, asking a defender, why are you why are you keeping the ball out of your net? Or a goalkeeper. It's his job. It's his job to score goals. It's his job to, to want to achieve things. It's his job. As in, I, 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 let me say, we have different, different ambition. And if you have the stage and the platform to succeed, to achieve things, you should take advantage of it. And that's what this man has been doing. I don't see that as being selfish. I don't see that as being selfish. If he's getting to the end of his career, don't let us forget that. And he still feels, he's, he has always been saying it, he still feels like he can still do things, he can still like achieve things, he can still play good football, he can still run, he can still uh, do one or two things on the pitch. So if somebody is having that belief at his age, give him the chance now. Give him the chance. Let him play. Just a year ago, if, if, if the almighty Anthony, Con- Anthony Conte was saying he played against Cristiano Ronaldo. Are you telling me in that space of how many days or how many months Cristiano Ronaldo is finished? No, no. If he doesn't fit into your style of play, you should just allow him to go. But if... You are not saying that because of what he has said or because of something that has happened, he's been selfish. No, no, don't let us forget. Whatever Manchester United achieved last season, it was because of Cristiano Ronaldo. It was because of the selfishness of Cristiano Ronaldo. If he was not playing, nothing would have been there for Manchester United. Everything was going wrong for Manchester United last season. But before you know, Ronaldo will come from nowhere and score one goal. And that's the end. He will win the match. So if, if Ronaldo is trying to create something for himself 
an, a, a, an history for himself, you should not call that selfish. I don't think that is selfish. We will not be calling Pele Maradona today if they don't do things the way they have done it. I don't know if you understand. So there are many names that have been forgotten today. They play good football, they, they play football, they do everything, but nobody is remembering them again today. So if this man is trying to create a story and history for himself, you should not call that selfish. You should rather name it something else. Maybe he's ambitious. <laughs> you can say that. You cannot say he's selfish, please. Okay, okay, okay. Thank you very much. As we are rounding up the show, what is your own take for World Cup? What is your own view? Which country are you thinking that is will go far in this World Cup? Are you seeing any African country going far in this World Cup? Um, actually, I'm um, I'm looking at Senegal going far because they've done most of the things that they are supposed to do right. So the only thing that I think is missing in uh, in Senegal is um. Sadio Mane that will not be available and they have declared him that he's going to go through a surgery that will not be available. I'm very, very disappointed and unhappy because of that. Every other African team that are there, I'm not so sure what's going to happen for them because um, like Ghana, I just learned today that some players that actually qualified Ghana for the World Cup are not even going to appear in the World Cup. So why allowing them to suffer? Even because of that alone, they're only there. Only their prayer or their unhappiness alone can make you to not to go far in the, in the competition. So um, I'm seeing Senegal going far. We have Ghana and other teams. So I wish all of them well. Uh, I just hope what has happened to uh, Germany and Spain will not happen to France this time around, where a defending champion come out of the competition even in the group stage. So I hope it will not happen to them. I wish they, they go far. And I hope they will play together as a team. So it's going to be a very nice competition. Every game is going to be very, it's going to be like a final. From the group stage onward, I know. So all teams have ambition to go far. They want to do well for their team, for their country. And it's going to be a very, one of the best competitions that we woke up that we have seen so far, I hope. Thank you. Thank you, Abumali, for coming to the show. I did not take this opportunity for granted. Thank, Thank you for showing up on the show. Echo Chike, I think Network and Light was the one that disconnected <laughs> you. I'm grateful for you also coming to the show. Uh, tomorrow, on Sunday, we are going to meet on politics and policy where we'll talk about Nigerian debts and the, the effect on our economy and the way out. We're having to big businessmen and people that are very good economists and accountants who share that sort of please i'm begging every one of you subscribe to our youtube channel de voice one two so, uh, please follow us on instagram de underscore voice one two visit our website read updates news www.devoice de the voice one two dot com ad malik thank you very much for coming to the show thank I'm you very much on behalf of everybody on behalf of everybody here on behalf of and all our fans, I say bye for now. Thank you, bye. Hello, everybody. My name is. Sorry for coming this. Sorry for coming this. Sorry for coming this. Hello, everybody. My name is Adi Wadi. Sorry for coming. Coming this. Thank you, thank you, doctors. Sorry for coming late. Uh, okay. Doki. Yeah, hello, hello, sir. Sorry for coming late. All no is problem, well. no problem. Yeah, My dear yeah, will be great. <laughs> we'll keep praying. If you hear some noise, that is the voice or that is the noise for generator. Oh, okay. Okay, I want to put I want to position I want to reposition. Everything will still be okay. We are working I'm working on a small studio so that oh, okay. my audience will be able to get one of the best the video quality of my own side. Are you there? Yeah, I can hear you clearly. Okay. Thank you, Doctor. It's good to have you on the show. 
Thank you. Thank you. I'm very grateful to you. Doctor, please can you introduce yourself more proper to our audience? Are you there? Yeah, I can hear you clearly. My name is um Osazua Yudaro. I'm very Dr. Uh, Watts. I'm Dr. Osazua Yudaro, but everybody knows me as Osas. So yeah. I am a doctor. Like I have to practice in Nigeria as well as in the UK as well. So Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I did not take this opportunity for granted. Uh doctor you says when you teach us to take more water now uh be taking more water. <laughs> that's impressive. That's but, very impressive. But the, my problem is that I've not have time to go and check my VP. I will go and check it. So uh, well, I mean you should, you should, you should take our time to do that. It will help. I will I will it's because of this program I'm putting all efforts by the special grace of God so next month we are going to have a very good time and a lot of content. Doctor the floor is yours. Oh okay uh okay <laughs> I guess so one of my colleagues good afternoon a good evening everybody say um so any, any I good be... <laughs> so I'll just talk briefly about um diabetes I remember we did the topic is let's discuss diabetes. I'm actually open to your questions and um I'll try and break it in fact they'll probably use PG English to probably break it to Oh, enjoy. So everybody will understand. <laughs> okay, so um <laughs> briefly it's diabetes mellitus and many of us would say diabetes mellitus the person get diabetes um book of the people that were managed book of the people that have managed over the years have actually had diabetes and we had to treat them in long run. Um but what is this diabetes? And as I said at the end of this discourse I'm open to and questions and I would be able to answer by God's grace. So um what is diabetes in itself? Diabetes is actually what we call the metabolic condition meaning is a wala in the body <laughs> whereby there is a abnormality that affects um primarily glucose but also affect other biochemicals in the body. and it's responsible for the person not to be able to take in and appreciate the glucose in the blood so that's when they now have high blood sugar so if i were to give it in the normal definition we give it would say diabetes is when there is a derangement is a metabolic disorder that is associated with absolute that is when there is no or when there is no the or when there is insulin but the body cannot use insulin at due to instances there is insulin but the body oh. which now all other biochemicals in the body and these chemicals i'm talking about is the glucose that carbohydrate the uh, protein as well as the lipid it, it, it's really sad because um it's really a big issue in nigeria because many people have diabetes and they are not aware or they are aware but they are not taking necessary precautions so they come down with complications of diabetes so i'll just give you the fact that the major issue is <laughs> the major issue about diabetes affect all of that system in the body that's why when we are talking about the complications <laughs> when we are talking about the complications it's um it's a lot starting from up down to the other parts of the body so just to portray the fact it has a mere symptom but because then there are types the commonest types that we talk about in the nigeria context is the fact that we have type 1 and type 2 now type 1 diabetes is generally when there is no insulin at all and i remember when i was telling you about the definition when i did this code the definition i talk to you you get time where person no gain insulin at all so that one is usually type 1 diabetes and there are times when there is insulin but the body cannot use it and that's all called type 2 diabetes so you see one no insulin the other one there is insulin but they're not the reason so the other types the other ones are the one that associated with pregnancy that are called gestational diabetes mellitus that one is of course in pre, um pregnant women but thankfully sometimes it resolves on its own sometimes it doesn't by i i just we just talk briefly on that so 
Um, the major symptoms that patients will usually present with is they will be drinking a lot of water, they will be urinating excessively, and they will usually be hungry. And when they are usually hungry, they will usually be eating. <laughs> I can't say your water. They will usually be eating, but they will be noticing that they lose weight. Those are like the three commonest features with diabetes mellitus. They are very common, and a lot of people have this. But I could just give you insights to the risk factors. So what are the risk factors to this? What can predispose me? Which if it costs and make, I get diabetes. Is it like I just look up one money and get diabetes? There are many risk factors to diabetes. You know when I talked about hypertension the other day? I talked about the risk factors for hypertension. I talked, I talked about diet. Now, some of the risk factors for diabetes are similar to that of hypertension. But top amongst those is the family history. If there are people in the family that have diabetes, I've had patients that their family, maybe their dad or their granddad had diabetes, it increases their risk of having diabetes. So they need to watch it. You understand? So family history is a great risk factor for diabetes mellitus. Other risk factors include physical inactivity. If it is, you just keep sitting down, not doing anything, you're not engaging yourself, you're not post, you're not exercising. These are risk factors. When you get to sit down all day, doing just on the system, doing all that stuff. Another risk factor is obesity. I categorically have to say this. You know, I was I worked somewhere in Nigeria where out of ten percent, out of ten patients that come that I that I see daily, nine of them were obese and one is going to be overweight. I mean, do you understand? So they, they you know there are people anywhere they'll say anywhere belly face in the front. Just keep consuming, just keep consuming. Where the people say that there's hardship in Nigeria, even with the hardship, oh, I need shawarma, give me shawarma, give me pizza, give me this, give me that. They just keep it is I'm enjoying life. The next thing I'll hear is allow me to enjoy myself. <laughs> or some will tell you that this is life. Now they want to be kidding that we know if you kill ourselves. But don't think that you don't kill yourself doesn't mean you increase the risk of you having conditions that would that would kill you in the long run. You understand? So obesity is a major factor that people need to put at the back of their mind. Then there are other things. For ladies, there's all called polycystic ovarian syndrome. There's when there's some sacs with water in the ovaries of these women. It increases the risk of them having diabetes mellitus. Then diet. I've talked about diet, which increases the risk of having obesity. And this also at the risk of causing, um, what do I call it? I, um, increase the risk of having diabetes. So my appeal to everybody that is hearing me on this or that will hear me in the later on, or later on in this conversation, my appeal is please watch your diet. That a food is good or is, is, is appealing to the eyes does not mean it's good for your blood. Does not mean it's good for your system. Does not mean it's good for your, your stomach. Please. It's sweet. I agree. It's delicious. It's tempting. Even me, I fall into the temptation. But my appeal is your health is very important. So I'm just giving you just a brief insight into this. But I don't actually people would say, please, they, when you say, if I, a doctor, if I take too much of sugar, now nah, I will get that. But it's no, 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 no. It's, it's just, it's just, a, it's just something that people like to say, but it's not true. It's just like when they say you take too much of, when they start telling you about uh, typhoid and malaria, I'll body tell you typhoid and malaria, they, all those, is it that you have malaria or you have you have typhoid? There are two different conditions. Is it that your malaria was not poorly treated? That's why you have malaria. I have to say this now because we, many of my colleagues who are here, I know I've seen this video, they know that we get to face this a lot. Doctor, I just get malaria. Don't get typhoid. The typhoid, don't shoot me, shoot me, shoot me, shoot me. No, bros, you didn't have typhoid. All you had was poorly treated malaria. But that's just a digression. Sorry about that. So I was just telling the fact that taking too much sugar okay. doesn't. But it increases. I mean, all these things I've stated increase the risk of someone having diabetes mellitus. And the commonest one that we see is type 2 diabetes mellitus. So the question is, what do we do when a patient comes with diabetes mellitus? The brilliant, the, the first things are usually lifestyle. Lifestyle modification is the top on the list in managing patients with diabetes mellitus, lifestyle modification. So it's important 
that you watch your lifestyle, what you what you eat, exercise. It can never be overemphasized the fact that you need to exercise as much as possible. It increases your risk. It helps increase reduce the risk of many health conditions across board: diabetes, hypertension, obesity itself, many conditions. So exercise is a very key thing. Then drink a lot of water. <laughs> Reduce, I mean, alcohol intake has not been, I mean, it has, it also increases the risk. So when you take too much of alcohol, it increases the risk because it can overwork your liver and it can, in this run, have a lot of downturn effect on the body. So your diet is important. Please take a lot of fruit and vegetable. I keep saying it that Nigeria is blessed with a lot of fruit and vegetable sources. When I was in Abuja, I, I mean, going to Kubwa Market, Kubwa Market, they sell fruits. Particularly when I was up north, I got I get fresh fruits, fresh vegetables, and it helps. It's not every time you just have to fry. It's not every time you have to shower, 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 shower. Some people will tell me that. Some people will tell me that. Doctor, they remind me. Yeah. You say what? Fresh fruits. Yeah. You like fresh fruits? Yeah. Fruit. yeah. Fruit. yeah. Fruit. Just take it fresh. It's important. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this done. So th these are these are things you should do. And if perhaps you notice that you have these three key symptoms I mentioned, you are urinating excessively. Not because you are drinking too much of water, but I mean you are urinating excessively. You are drinking too much of water. You are losing weight despite eating a lot. Hungry? Please and please go and see your doctor. There are medications that we can give that would help to. If it's type 2 diabetes mellitus, for example, there are medications we can give to increase your body's sensitivity to responding to the insulin you have. However, if it's a type 1, type 1 is common amongst children. It's common amongst children and other conditions. If it's a type 1, we can give the patient insulin. Some patients are on insulin therapy for a long time. So it's important that you go to the doctor, get your sugar test. Now, if perhaps you already have diabetes, it's there's some. I mean, it's important that you know this that the sugar machine is not expensive. I bought my sugar machine when I don't have diabetes, but I had the, the sugar machine back then in years. I remember, like, is it three thousand, maybe five thousand? It's not so expensive. And moreover, to so even check your blood sugar, I know some people do it for 100 500 200 just to check it. Check your there's what we call a fasting blood sugar. Fasting blood sugar is done before you eat in the morning it can give you a picture of what is happening then you can also do a random blood sugar just done anytime i don't know that person am i making sense am i are you flying sir so so yes, the, the yes, point I'm is, with you. if you are, have diabetes please and please ensure you take your medications and show you watch your diet there are people who have lived with diabetes for a very long time in fact you don't even know it's just normal. They watch their diet, they watch what they eat, they take their medication when necessary. And this has gone a long way to help them to have complications of diabetes. I'll just give you briefly some, some complications of diabetes. It could, it could cause stroke. It's one of the risk factors for stroke. So stroke might not be village people having meeting. It might actually be the fact that you don't manage diabetes properly and now you have that uh, stroke. It can cause blindness. Some patients with diabetes, they have what called diabetes retinopathy. They have blindness from diabetes retinopathy, and they can't even wash it. If you come to the heart, it can cause the one that we call heart attack. Ah, ah. Some of these heart attacks that we have, some of these people that die from, oh, the patient just have heart attack and he don't die. It could be as a result of diabetes in itself. Because diabetes will cause a lot of accumulation of blood and blood vessels, the blood, the pipe in the in the body that is transferring blood to the muscle of the heart. Because you're not controlling your heartbeat. Are you controlling your heartbeat? You know, you can feel your heartbeat, yeah? You can't, but you can't control it. So because you can't control it, the, the bloods that are going there, there's blood going there every time. If they are blocked, the heart muscle is gone and voila, burst. You say two minutes, everywhere burst. All right, so as I said, if you go to the stomach, it causes a lot of issues in the stomach. If you go to the leg, now, this is it. If we are diagnosed with diabetes mellitus and you find out that you have injury, we usually make an appeal that things don't it's not all injury that vision that have diabetes is going to be cleaning by themselves mm. it should be properly cleaned and properly managed because it can worsen and you get to cut the people's leg there are many patients that we have had to cut their leg and just started with a small injury 
that spread and kept on spreading. <laughs> That's what you know about that. That kept on spreading till it got to the point where we had to remove the leg. And sometimes it can even worsen and it caused what we call it caused infection in the blood and sepsis come in and wala bust everywhere scatter. So my appeal is there are a lot of wala. This is established wala with diabetes. So it's early detection. So and prevention is the best way to managing this. I hope I have uh, made sense and I've said Yes, yes, days. yes, you are making sense. Yes, you are making sense. It's just that the network okay. is not the network is checking. Oh, sorry we about that. We can hear you me. very well. We can hear you very well, but the net your face is checking. But I don't oh. say your face shine. <laughs> sorry about that. But but I I just give a brief intro and a brief um highlights about the risk factors, the types. So my take home message in this discourse is the fact that number one, if there's anybody in your family that has diabetes and if you are at risk of having diabetes, please watch it. Number two, ensure that you watch your diet and do your exercises as much as possible. Now, number three, but Nigeria, have, but Nigeria, the way we all do, the way we all do, do we need any extra exercise? <laughs> Oslin is not exercise, there's everything. Oslin ah. is for daily bread, but exercise, I mean, Oslin is not I, I, I would say all your, what you are telling me, telling us, all yeah. the viewers, even in the Instagram and YouTube, I all, I'm taking note of it now. I'm taking note of it now. But my problem is that, do you know that this morning, uh, yesterday night, I was on my way to Kefi, uh, yesterday, to Kefi, from Kefi early in the morning, back to Lube, from Lube, oh, wow. back to where they are said. No, okay. Ah. After, I'm, and our office is in, like, four-story building. I climbed that more than four times in a day. Me, did I need any, see, as I did like this, did I need any exercise? <laughs> it, it, it has to be realistic. It's only some part of your body that is working. The exercise we are talking about is every part of your body that is working. It's only, you've only been working on your legs. What of your hands? What of, I mean, what of the other parts of your muscles? So it, no it, it, I, I want to go and buy boots now. I want to go and start playing ball. <laughs> yeah, Every you know, Sunday. as simple as as simple as jogging, as simple as jogging, as simple as um just just walk around. I know we don't we, we, we could just I'm maybe like when I was in where I where I was in Abuja, you could probably if you were Kuba, for example, I can say just take a stroll from um Kuba Bridge down to Guarimpa. Just take it through. It's two and through. I mean, maybe the sorry, Galadimawa gates, the two sides. It's it's it goes a long way to actually exercise the muscles and everything. But I mean, that's my appeal. So I at this junction, I think I have given give it an insight, a brief insight into diabetes in the light of them. I don't know if there's anyone that probably have some questions to ask. And if you have questions, I would be most glad to to answer you. Thank but you very much. That's, that's just the major issues with diabetes. And it, as I said, it can affect every aspect. And it can actually affect the kidneys. We've had a lot of patients who are on dialysis in the long run just because the fact that they had to... Um, they co it, it competed as kidney failure and they had to keep doing dialysis and talk about other stuff. So it's it's very very it's multi systemic meaning it can affect many systems in the body. So that's why we are really it's really something out there for us to watch out for. In some developed times, the government takes over management of patients with diabetes. They ensure that the patients are well taken care of. But we are in Nigeria. Uh, hopefully, the next election is going to change. I don't actually who I will vote for. <laughs> I don't vote. There. Well, you don't know who I'm rooting for, but. Hopefully, the next election is going to cause a very wonderful change in Nigeria. Ah, hmm. Doctor, one of my, my, my chief is, is here. Thank you very much, chief. <laughs> okay, my bro, thank you very much for coming to the show. My own question yeah, is, yeah. uh, I, my pop man has found the case of diabetes. I mean, okay. he's an old masha. Yeah, but okay. later, after checking, because... After we discover, after, are you hearing me? Very well. Uh -huh. After I discover, after the test that to show up that you have diabetes, therefore you just take some, you avoid some food. 
Okay. Do you know that we need to rush him back to the hospital? They say he should go and take more sugar. And since that okay. time, he has not experienced it again. What can you, is there anything that can cause it that that has, it's around that, around 80 something. It's, okay. let me say, it's, it's that time that he has that issue was 80. It was it's 80. Because it's close to his 90 now. It's still alive. Okay. Uh, um, thank you very much for the question. Now, there are people who, with diet, they will control their diabetes, with the diabetes they have properly. I have to say it clearly because I, I once we once managed the patient back then during my, my internship days. The patient was not on medication. The patient was just on diet. So there are people who have had diabetes mellitus and the only issue, the major issue of what happened was with their diet, they controlled what they ate, they reduced high uh, calorie diet. It helped them. So it could be the case that there's a very high chance that he worked on his diet. And I forgot to mention that some of us in Nigeria, we usually would overtake our drugs and we will not be having low sugar. Because to leave it out there, low sugar is worse than high sugar. Just to put it in the context. Low sugar can kill than high sugar. But back to the context. So there's a high chance that with his diet, he was able to control it. And people, people, people respond differently. The way I would respond is going to be different from the way you respond as well. So the fact is... You need to put that at the back of your mind. So what I, I would say is there's a high chance that with his diet, he was fine. You understand? But maybe... I'm with you. It will probably, it would probably need some further tests so that we'll be actually able to nail. Does, did he actually make a diagnosis of diabetes or not? You get the point. So the, the, the thing is, we need to just do some tests later, but it might... Now... Sometimes your sugar might be high just because that period you did stressful conditions and it not cause your blood to produce more sugar just to meet up with your energy demand. So that could also be... That does not mean you have diabetes. There are symptoms you must have and there are red tests to confirm if the patient has diabetes. I don't okay. know what I mean. So, that but I check my sugar that, and, and I don't have my... That is where I'm going... That is where I'm going to... Maybe that mm -hmm. time the sugar is high and the result just yeah. said that the sugar is high. Because when when I received the call that you have diabetes, Mr. I don't know what I say, this old man. What do you don't they get now? <laughs> okay, Later after some uh, uh but but he is he, is a man that since I know him he watch what he eats. Somebody wants yeah. me to bring him alive. Okay. He watch what he eats. My father watched what he eats, even to today. Ah really? I can tell you he watched he can, if, you come, if, if you come and visit me, you, uh, I do tell people that. This man doesn't take any of any of food. He's a, if you talk about in food, though, he's very disciplined in that. He eats more of this vegetable, too. Oh, yeah. Brilliant. Okay, sorry, I'm bringing somebody online. Uh, why? Uh, okay. Sorry, please, you can send me a request back. Maybe you want to have, you have any question you want to ask doctor. But after that, he just, even later, he told me that there is one leaf he caught that I was like, this man, don't go and take anything that will harm you. I never get money for cow. <laughs> you understand? I, yeah, I was yeah. just thinking that sometimes being, when you have high blood sugar or any sugar, it's not yet a strong diabetes. All oh, this diabetes has great. Yeah, um, sorry, I didn't get that question. That is diabetes as great. So, okay, well, there is states what we call pre-diabetes. That one is those that are close to having it, but they don't actually have it. But I said this has uh, to be uh, made by like my father, own, like my father, own, like my father. Own. Well, well, yeah, 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 <laughs> the thing is, if he, to confirm the test, here, yeah, he needs to do what we call a fasting blood sugar. Fasting blood sugar is sugar the blood test that is done. Blood sugar test done in the morning, morning. before he eats anything. You understand? And if he does it on two occasions and he has, or he does what we call a random blood sugar and he has symptoms, he must have the symptoms, the three cardinal symptoms I've mentioned, then we will not say, okay, he has. But if he doesn't have this, that doesn't make him have that bit Okay. Please, I, uh, maybe, I don't know your name. You send me a request. I try to bring you up, but the net, maybe it's the network or you do not want to show your face. Please, you can send me a request before Dr. Have anything to say again because me, I'm a village man. 
very well. I mean, I'm open to any questions. If anyone has Please, any questions, if you have, if you have any question, or uh, doctor, I'm looking to us to open a email so that maybe if there is any question in a previous and the current, uh, because as our YouTube just starts, I've not opened the comment section, but by the grace of God, I'm open. I'm going to open the comment section for now. As maybe I open an email for the voice at talk. If there is any question, I'll forward the question to you before any of our show. Yeah, that's Talk fine. That's that's it's it, it's it's fine. It would, I'll be happy to to, to give you responses as much as possible. Okay, doctor. Uh, apart from all what you have explained, uh, the food, uh, we should be careful of what we take our uh, intake. Are you encouraging us now? Because one of your speeches, are you encouraging us to take more sugar? I can take like how many bottles of food per <laughs> day? Don't so that, going to maybe, do that right maybe right. after <laughs> today, after no, today, no, no, no. as I they carry water, they carry I, I, I'm not encouraging you, sugar. I'm just going. To, I'm just trying to debunk that. I'm not encouraged, but you should just be moderate. But you understand, just be moderate. But please keep drinking water because even diabetic patients they need a lot of water. So if you drink more water. You know, by stressing your kidneys, you know, by stressing your body, it helps a lot as well. Okay. Even yeah. when they come with some complications, there are some complications that I, I didn't mention. I mean, I mean, like probably done that, that will cause them to lose consciousness and stuff like that. Uh, there's, there are some very what we call diabetes ketosis, acidosis, and other form of complications. These complications, part of the management or part of treating them is giving them water, not like water to swallow, but water through the vein. That's like the first line in management. It's part of the first line in management. So it's important that you drink your water. Okay. okay, but do we have any ratio of intake of sugar we can take? Um, I can't really say, but I just advise that if you take take more of natural sugar, I mean natural sugar from fruits, I mean, those ones are like safe. Debino, like Debino, sugar cane. <laughs> Yes, those, those ones have, I mean, good sugars that are very, I mean, they have good good amount of sugar that will help your body as well. And they are sorry, natural. For sorry, P, maybe you are watching us outside of the country. Maybe I do, Maybe there is no anything called Debino. You know, it's a local, <laughs> it's Nigerian, local, that is what we call it in Nigeria. Okay, thank you very much, Joe, doctor, doctor. It is good to have you. Thank you. Really. I'm grateful. I've learned a lot. Even this water now, ah. Uh, Inside the canal, we have a lot. It, it's important. And get it's, water. Going, it, it's important, particularly this season. We are going to dry season in Nigeria and the sun and all. So drinking a lot of water is going to reduce because you are just going to be losing a lot of water from different sources. There will be increased demand of water in your body. So drinking a lot of water this period, particularly in this dry season, is going to help you a lot and reduce the risk of overworking your kidney. Thank you, to, Doctor. It is good to have you on the show. Thank you very much. Yeah. I'm grateful. Thank you. Thank you for having me. All right. uh, thank, thank you. you. Doctor, please can you introduce yourself once again before we close the show? It's like we do not have any. Uh, my name is, my name is um, Dr. Osasa Ibedaro. But everybody knows me as Osas. Osas. So, Dr. Osas. Right. Um, everybody knows Dr. Osas, but that's right. And okay. uh, what else? I am a very good doctor, licensed practice, both in Nigeria and in the UK. So that's all. Wow. Thank you very much. Thank you, doctor. My yeah, name is Adewale. Adewale, the host of the show. Uh, please follow us on Instagram, the voice underscore D, D E underscore voice one two. Follow us on YouTube, D E space voice one two. Uh, follow us on our Twitter, Andrew, also. Uh, visit our website, www.thevoice.com. Uh, Dr. Usas, we are grateful to have you on our show. Please. Thank you. We are very, very grateful. Thank you for this free. Dr. Usas, we are. Uh, see, I give you all. My regards to everybody. Everybody that has contributed to this show that have come on way that have come to come on live to come and watch the show. We are grateful to you. Uh, you can share the video, share it on the YouTube. Thank you. I remember almost self Adewale. Bye for now. Dr. Osas, bye bye. Hello, everybody. My name is Adewale. Welcome to our Health Talk. Welcome to the show today. Welcome to the show. I'm waiting for Dr. Osas. I'm waiting for him. I'm 
waiting for you. I'm waiting for you. Okay, Dr. Osas, if you are there, please send me a request. Dr. Osas, if you are there, please send me a request. I'm waiting for Dr. Osas. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. You can send me a request. I will accept it. Okay, thank you. Thank you, sir. Please, you can share it here. Okay, so I guess you can see me now. Yes, I can see you, doctor. Okay, yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, good evening. Good evening, my Hello. friend, doctor. How are you? I'm fine. Can you hear me clearly? Yes, I can hear you very clear. Okay. <laughs> I don't good to see you. I'm good to have you on the show. Yeah, it's been a, been a very long time, is it? Uh, it's been a very long time. Uh, Thank you very much. <laughs> Yeah, I'm seeing some of my colleagues joining on the show. I'm interested. Wow. Okay, I would like to. Be, do you want me to bring any one of them on? Yes, it's fine. They are shy. They won't come up. But it's fine. Ah, um, why? Well, please come on. We want to learn from you guys. <laughs> want to uh, learn from no you? No worries. It's fine. Please, let me a request if you want to come online, please. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So, um, I think we are starting almost immediately, are we? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before we start, Dr. Osas is my friend. He's a very good friend of mine. I respect him. I do not take this opportunity for granted. I love you. Thank you for your support. Uh, uh, <laughs> thank you for, for how you accept the invitation. Please follow us on Instagram, The Voice. We we'll talk on everything, anything that is good. Any content that is good, visit our web, visit our website www.d voice d e normal voice one two, and not only that one, visit our Twitter handle, um, mm -hmm. visit our YouTube channel d e the voice one two. Mm -hmm. We have a lot of content. We are coming out with a lot of content. Not only on politics, we talk on everything that is related to life, and I pray God will help us. The floor to you. You own the floor now, Doctor. Good to see okay. you. Okay, thank you very much, um, Kaga. So, I think it's the topic is quite common, but I will be very brief and I'll try and be very. Doctor, um, please, can you make your screen so that because I'm putting this thing straight to YouTube? Yeah, I would like it okay. like that. Sir. Can, you me, can you see me clearly? Yes, I can see you very well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so. The just a minute, uh, okay, just a minute to think. Mm, one minute, please. All right, so I'll just talk briefly on <laughs> just, uh, yeah, good. So I'll just talk briefly on hypertension and some of the mites that are associated with hypertension, particularly in in Africa, Nigeria, to be precise. Um, I know that once you, if, if you go out there in the hospitals around, you keep hearing hypertension, you keep hearing hypertension, IBP, IBP. You know, I remember practicing somewhere and people will ask, um, if I ask them, are, you, are they treating you for any medical condition? And the people will say, oh, doctor, the doctor I get IBP. Uh, sorry, I'm, I probably will use pigeon as well in this conversation because I feel that... Yeah, you're welcome, you're welcome, <laughs> we are welcome, you're welcome. I like that. Okay. All right, so um, a lot of people would usually would say, doctor, they talk, say I get IBP, just like that. But they'll say, oh, doctor, they say I get high sugar. So hypertension is indeed out there, and it's something, if we don't keep talking about it, changes will not be made. So I'll just go briefly with the definition. Now, hypertension, as it says, is elevated blood pressure. That is when your BPDI high, where we're. Now, many things can cause your blood pressure to be high. But in the case of hypertension, it is when we have done the readings like twice. Maybe I did it now, and I did it tomorrow, and it's persistently high. That is hypertension. Or I do it six hours apart. Am I making sense? Then 
other things, if I run from here, maybe I run to the market and come back, it can cause my blood pressure to be high. But that does not mean I have hypertension. But I have hypertension when you consistently check my blood pressure and it's always high. And it's indeed out there in Nigeria. And um, there are many causes. But I would want to give us the values now. When we check hypertension, the values of your blood pressure usually should be less than there's the one on top and there's the one under. The one on top is what we call systolic. The one under is what we call diastolic. So the one on top should be less than 140. While the one under should actually be less than 80. So if it is now higher than that on two different occasions, then you are turning towards hypertension. Am I making sense? So that's like the basic d definition of hypertension. So don't say because you go to the clinic today, <laughs> are you checking? You just say, ah, doctors, doctor, talk, see, you check your blood pressure. Does one system. You were running, you were under the sun. Your blood pressure would go up. But when it's done at rest and everything. So the, the thing is, there are several causes. And being in Africa, Africa is a major is a major seat for some type of hypertension. I will talk about that in this discourse. So as I was saying, um, there are several causes. But common to us in Africa is the fact that there's what we call primary hypertension. So generally, we have primary and we have secondary. Primary is the one we don't know the cause. While secondary, we know the cause. Am I making sense? So I'm Sorry. going to be very pleased. If you don't understand, just explain. So primary is we usually don't know the cause. But funny enough, there have been some theories to say that this could possibly be the cause for primary hypertension. And I'll give us an example. And all of us, including myself, we are all corporate of this. Um, it's commonly said that the reason why primary hypertension is common in Africa is because of the fact that um, we overwork our kidneys. Normally, the kidneys help to regulate. It secretes some stuff that will help to regulate blood pressure, particularly when there's low blood or low volume in our body. We Africans are blessed we are. We used to overstress our kidneys. So this causes the kidney to persistently secrete or produce those chemicals that continually try to maintain the blood pressure. And in doing that, we are going to have hypertension. That's why whenever I'm seeing a patient, my appeal to them is please ensure you drink water because trust me, Africans don't drink water. You know, it is actually... Cried is actually advised that you drink um, close to two two thousand three hundred mils of water a day. When you mean two thousand three hundred mils of water, that's like two point three liters. If I ask you, when did you drink water? You tell me I drank one pure water when I wanted to eat breakfast. I drank one pure water when I had to drink eat lunch and dinner. Now look at it. One pure water is fifty cl. Abi. Or some we even say 60 cl. That means you are taking one 50 cl in the morning, afternoon, and evening. That's like 1.5. Yeah. Look at the deficits: 2,300 minus 1,500. So you see that you are not doing yourself any good. So please, if there's anything you're taking for me in this discourse, ensure you drink water. It's a gift. I mean, my colleagues. Let me go for one bottle of water. <laughs> Doctor, go ahead. All right, so as I was saying, my colleagues would surely agree with me that there are people who usually regulate the water they drink. I mean, there are complicated cases where you now have to say, please, you don't need to drink water. Those are people whose kidneys are already, I mean, they, they have a chronic kidney disease, and you need to measure the amount of water they drink and the amount of water that goes. So it, it, it goes on and on and on. So I've just talked about primary hypertension. Other causes of hypertension could also include, I mean, there are many, many causes. <laughs> you are doing well. <laughs> I hope Aquafina is going to give you, give you advice for this day, advertising them. <laughs> okay, thanks. No. I don't take water, I don't take water like that. Too. But you know, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's like, it's, it's important we do that. So back to the discourse. So as I said, I'm talking about the causes. I've talked about the fact that primary, the cause is unknown, but there are speculation. And I just gave an instance of one of the speculation. 
sorry i'm not saying that that's the cause but it's been speculated but it's not like but i mean it stands to reason other causes could be hormonal what do you mean hormone hormone chemical secreted from different parts of our body i mean from specialized part of our body and when these are secreted at the very eye normally god is so wonderful that there's a balance when there's stress it's produced when there's less stress it's not produced so when these hormones are produced the more the more it can actually cause hypertension that's why people will now start telling you so many conditions we have um when there's there's this special gland in our neck very special structure when it comes out it's can excess of it can cause hypertension that's called hyperthyroidism then there are other conditions that i mean it's not common to Africa there's um, there's where the the there's a way the body is structured that there are a lot of pipes and the pipes are veins and actually there are times when the pipes are very tiny there are times when the pipes become big these are several factors of hypertension now there's one thing i need to mention here you could google it everybody could google it they'll say overthinking is causing hypertension no it doesn't cause hypertension there is no paper i mean there is no paper it, you just have hypertension because there are risk factors but i'll talk about the risk factors you understand but overthinking is not like a cause but i'm not saying you should do overthinking no overthinking is not good i mean one of the songwriter i think he said overthink not the cause for me i don't know how he said it but the point i'm raising is it's not like it's See, if I overthink, I can't go, go yo, doctor, because I do overthink, I think, hey, 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 no. You are just thinking, before yourself, it's not true. Do you understand? There are papers to actually show that it can only cause your blood pressure to increase for a while. And um, it's come down. See, the topic of hypertension is quite inexhaustible, but I'll just try and summarize it. So I was going to talk about the risk factors about hypertension, which is very important in this discussion. Number one, being of african descent is a risk factor so the thing i appeal to people is that we are africans itself is a risk factor to some condition so so here in you know, other parts of the world that they are where they are is a risk factor to some disease condition but don't put yourself at that point where the disease can easily come that's why i'll still advise you to drink water <laughs> I might be I'll be trying so to take like my How many bottles of this one will be taken by dinner? Uh, I don't know. I think it's like 75 CL. So, uh, I mean, it's about 75 CL. I can't really remember. So, you should do the calculation. 75, 75. So how, many, you know that. Water, how many? How many? Um, pure water is 50 CL. So, yeah. that's like, it's not to 500 meters. That's like uh, 1.5 liters if you take three pure waters. So you are supposed to take like four or five. Per day. Don't worry. I'll take minimum. Uh, and your kidney, your kidney will be happy for it. Trust me. Your kidney will want to give you high five. You say, oh, guy, you're doing well. <laughs> All right. So back to the discourse. Um, I was talking about the risk factors. Number one risk factor is African descent. Number two is family history. So if you have someone in your family that has had hypertension, it increases the risk of you having hypertension. You understand? Other risk factors could include um, obesity. Now, obesity is not when I wake up in the morning and I say, today I am fat. No, that's not obesity. I mean, that's, you could, you could probably give a subjective view of obesity. You would, the reason say you do fat, but you never fat because you need to confirm whether you're actually fat. And that, that brings me to a common thing that is done on arrival in the hospital, your BMI. That's the body mass index. But that's not something we'll be discussing today, but just for you to know. You understand? The objective way of checking if you are actually on that Yes, I can hear you. The network is from tracing. But go ahead, sir. Oh, okay. All right, good. So, obesity, you need to objectively measure it it's not like i think i fat or it'd be like i fat mm -mm. how do you measure it when everyone is free outside this discourse you can check your weight and your weight over the your height but your height in meters now let me give you an example my weight currently 
I think I checked my weight is about 69. I'm 69 kg and my height is about one. 178 centimeters in meters it's 1.78 so you are going to calculate your weight over your height squared then if it is greater than um if it's greater than 25 you're obese that is like the objective way then there are other grades but i mean i just want to give you an insight to that so that's why just in case I forget, please ensure you watch your diet. These are these are release factors to having hypertension. So I've talked about family history. I've talked about um, I've talked about the um, I've talked about family history. I've talked about African descent. Another risk factor for hypertension is also age, as one ages. The blood vessels, the pipes in the body become thickened, so which now increases the stress on the heart. And when you do that, it indeed will stress the body, and indeed we overwork the heart, and indeed we increase blood pressure. Am I making sense? So these are risk factors. Then, generally, the question now is, what do we do? First of all, please, if you are told that you have hypertension. It's not a death sentence. I can I will talk about the complications of hypertension, but it's not a death sentence. And if you have, please, you need to see the doctor. Now, let me just give you insight to what are the symptoms of patients that have hypertension. How will, what would I have in my body that will make me say, ah, the blacks are get hypertension. Blacks are not get hypertension. Number one. Most people walking the streets of Nigeria don't know they have hypertension. So we say it's asymptomatic, meaning the person can just be without any symptom. I remember vividly when I was practicing medicine somewhere in one of the villages in Edo State. I had a patient that she just came to greet somebody who just gave birth. And she now said, ah, doctor, make I just check my blood pressure. And her blood pressure was reading 180 over 140. I had to say, Madam, calm down. I need to check it again. It was still reading that high. She didn't know. She doesn't have headache. She doesn't have body pain. She doesn't have tummy pain. She doesn't have chest pain. She doesn't have anything. But she had hypertension. So most of the patients usually will present without symptoms. So it's usually... I walk out for road. I just fall down. Patient. So usually people will present to the hospital with complications, which I'll be talking about in the next couple of minutes. You understand? And I'll be open to questions, hopefully. I'll be able to answer some questions. So but back to the, yes, to the you talk. Question, so, you can send it. You can write it and send it on the wall. I will be jotting it down now. Okay. So as I was saying, the, the thing now is. What are the presentation? Some will not present to those that now have symptoms that have the manifestation of hypertension. Commonly, they have a headache, or that they will have a headache. Please, I'm not saying all headache is hypertension. No, <laughs> don't call me wrong. But one of the commonest symptoms could also be hypertension. I, mean, I don't know where you get what I mean. Then others could include chest pain, cough. I mean, these could be symptoms, myriad of symptoms. And it could even be like normal malaria, like the next thing just ah, generalized body weakness. These could be symptoms. And it could also be symptoms of the condition that is causing the hypertension. Like there are some kidney diseases that can cause hypertension. When the blood vessels, the pipes in the kidneys, when they are very tiny, overworking the kidneys, that one could also cause hypertension. I mean, it's though quite rare in Africa, but it's still there. Or probably it's underdiagnosed in Nigeria, as, as I would say. So those are the common symptoms. Then when we examine the patient, we'll now check the blood pressure. It's usually very high. And what can be done? Once you go to see your doctor and your doctor has prescribed antihypertensive for you, please, I beg you, take it. I know that we like neutralizing everything. Thing, and say is the witch and everything. Sometimes it's ourselves. They are paying. Please ensure you take your medications. There are people who have hypertension and have complications that arise from hypertension. 
all because they did not adhere to the drugs. And I'll tell you what I'll write in my in my notes. I'll say patients' hypertension most likely was caused by non-adherence to medication. And I mean, that's what I'm going to write in my medication. Because if I ask you, when last did you take your antihypertensive? I took it seven days ago, five days ago, 10 days ago. And you're not monitoring your blood pressure. Ideally, as you age, I beg people to, I mean, I appeal to many people that you should try as much as possible to gather money and buy at least, if it's the battery one, to be checking your blood pressure. And if you are not privileged to have those ones, there are health centers in many of these villages. And in these villages, you could obviously just go to one of the health centers and say, please, I beg no, let me check my blood pressure. And whenever you check it, please record it for the doctor. Do you understand? Sorry, just... Sorry, it's like show, please. It's coming back online. Sorry for the it needs to get I, I, as I was saying, that's basically bulk of the things that regards the symptoms. Now, how do we prevent it? Which is a major talk in this discourse. Number one is if you have hypertension. Sorry, I saw a question. I'm got, I'm getting a question. I want to write it down. <coughs> Sorry, from I'll get I'll get this. If you want to ask a question, please maybe you should come online. It's like it's finding uh, it's finding this network very difficult. Right. I don't know what you can hear me clearly now. It should be clear. Me. Yeah, I can hear you clearly. From it's it's like, are you are you finding network is no, 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 no problem. It's it's fine. I'm I'm back. So, as I was saying, nobody. I was saying. I said that. Why somebody um, writes? Oh, doctor, please can you check on the screen? Can you see the question? And person build resistance to nitrate intensive. I'm I'm going to answer that question for sure. I would answer that question in the next couple of minutes. So I was saying but that. If you want to ask a question, you can also send the question to me so that I'll put you online. You ask him a yeah. question. All right, that's fine. Yeah, right. That's good. So. The, the thing about hypertension is, um, I was going to talk about preventing. So number one, it starts with our lifestyle. First of all, if you have hypertension, it's not a death sentence. There are things you can do. Ensure you take your medications. Then we talk about lifestyle. What are we talking about in the lifestyle? We're talking about your diet. I know that things are hard. <laughs> Thanks to Buari, things are very hard. But do you know in its simplicity of your vegetable, that vegetable, that fresh vegetable, honestly, uh, people in the city usually miss the fresh vegetable. I remember walking in the village, you go to one of these village markets, you get sweet, fresh vegetables. Your diet is very important. Avoiding too much of this fried fat would go a long way to save you from the stress of hypertension. Or worsening hypertension, as I can say. But the point is, your diet is very important. Ensure you drink a lot of water. Ensure you eat well. When I mean eat well, I know that many of us like shawarma. <laughs> I know that I'm shaking some tables. But see, please, your life matters to you as much as it matters to your family. Reduce it. Reduce high calorie diets. This can have issues with your blood vessels and while I will start. Aside that exercise, you would see, oh, I used to walk from, I mean, for those that know about them very well, you can say I walk from Total Garden to Gates, or I walk from, I mean, for those that, sorry, I'm busy about that. That's the, or you, maybe for those in Abuja, you say I walk from Guarimpa to Kubwa. For those in Abuja, you get, see, it's good. You walked from Agaripa to Kubwa. You walked from, from, if you're in a boy, maybe you walked from Presco to 
uh, Rumchi Park. It's fine. You did. But make it a deliberate act to exercise. Little exercise will go a long way. As long as you sweat, it will help your health. That's very important. Then, um, aside that, if they give you medications, please ensure you take your medications. Do you understand? So, and if you are being managed for diabetes mellitus, which is one of the risk factors, I forgot to mention it, please take your medications for your diabetes. Diabetes could worsen to become hyper, I mean, could coexist with hypertension. And please, I, I, when I was working somewhere, I found out that most of my patients were people who are office workers, who sit down for 15, 20 hours, not doing anything. I mean, not like doing anything. They are always working on their computer. I like that kind of job as well. But my appeal, please take two minutes walk, three minutes walk, four minutes walk. Because if you don't, you are increasing the risk of having arthritis. Let's leave hypertension. You are having the risk of because you are not using your joints. Because sedentary lifestyle is a risk factor to hypertension. So these are the general things I could add. Now, to the question: Can a person be resistant to antihypertensive? There, there are many medications that can that can be used to treat hypertension. And do they profile, can someone be resistant? Yes, it's highly likely. However, it's not common. And in the case where it happens, it's usually not what we call the primary hypertension. It's usually secondary hypertension. I'll take it again. That is, the cause is there. Um, like patients will, with some very abnormal blood vessels, like coartation or yota, they could be at risk of having antihypertensive resistance but thankfully if you can address the aorta issue the person will feel a lot better so can they yes but there's usually a remedy to distance and do you know there are people that could have been managed with just diet just diet and they go a long way to, to, I hope I've been able to answer your questions. I don't know. Whether, so I was going to talk about complications. One of the commonest complications that Nigeria, that is in Africa, is stroke. Stroke is one of the is one of the commonest complications for hypertension. If I mean it's there. Stroke. If you don't know stroke, stroke is when you are unable to move your limbs, your legs. Suddenly, it's very common. Apart from stroke. Other complications could also be, um, it could cause kidney failure. It's common in youths now. For those that don't know, hypertension is common in youth as well. And it can complicate kidney failure. I once lost a 21-year-old guy. He had what we call chronic kidney disease. I mean, um, hypertensive nephropathy. That is, the kidney failure as a result of hypertension. We lost him when I was in my house job then. Do you get so one of the other complications, so you start from the air, it can cause stroke. In the heart, it can cause heart attack. The one who call heart attack, which is actually called myocardial infarction, is a cause of, um, it can be caused by hypertension. So it's, hypertension can affect every system in the body. Every system in the body. It can, as I said, stroke, it can even affect the eye. There's what we call hypertensive retinopathy, meaning it's affecting the eye in itself. It could affect, I've talked about the kidneys, it could affect the liver, it could affect anywhere. So please, for what is what, ensure you take care of yourself. Being that we are in the risk factor genera I mean the risk factor race for having hypertension. Make sure you take care of yourself. And I hope this has helped us briefly. It's, it's just a brief overview of that attention. I, I'm not hearing you clearly. I don't know. I can't hear you clearly. Sorry, sorry. I moved myself before. I said, Rabo, okay. please, can you introduce yourself very well? Because you do not, because of the time I was thinking, please introduce yourself very well. So the people will not think that maybe I go carry mechanic or teach or something. <laughs> Introduce yourself and tell okay, us. Okay, my, uh, my, my name is uh, Mr. Zoe Godaro, and yes, I'm a medical doctor, and uh, I'm referring to the voice channel. <laughs> thank you, Basically, thank you very much. Well. That, that's well, a brief summary of who I am and all. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I think you give us the journal, I'll be able to publish it on the website. Please, thank as you. many people that are 
following us. Please, people that are viewing it, I see a lot of people viewing it. Please follow me. Go follow us on YouTube and on Instagram. But this episode, by the grace of God, I'm going to post it on our, on our YouTube. Please subscribe. Oh, Dr. Osas, thank you very much. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless your memory. God bless everything about you. Thank you. I did not take this opportunity for granted. My regards to everybody. My regards to all of your friends and all of your loved ones. I love you. Bye for now. Right. Thank you very much. Oh, do you have anything to say again? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, bye bye. Hello everybody, my name is Adiwali. Welcome to welcome to the uh, welcome to the show this morning. Sorry, we're having small network issue. Okay, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Good morning, sir. How are you, sir? Ah, uh, good morning, Pastor Adewale. How are you doing, sir? Yeah, oh, fine. We turn God. We turn God. How is how is how is Happy independent. Yeah, same to you. Happy independence. We thank God for a better Nigeria. Yeah, we thank God for everything. Maybe after the show, we'll pray like five minutes for our nation. Oh. We are expecting Pastor Sadiq also, but I'm trying. Maybe it's network issue. Like three days or four days ago, we are facing a lot about network issue. Thank yeah, God for yeah. everything. Over to you, Pastor. Okay. Um, this is a continuation of our program from last week, which is um, Discovering Discovery. the Purpose. Yes. yes. And um, certain scriptures have been itemized already, like Jeremiah 21, verse 11, where God says, My thought was with thought of good, but not of evil, but to bring you to an expected end. And we elaborate that the expected end is actually your purpose, is your destiny. And um, certain things were itemized, but let me quickly go for um, um, a continuation. Praise the Lord. Um, precious Holy Spirit, we thank you and we ask, O oh God, that let your word drop for us. Let your word drop to your people. Your word that will heal, your word that will strengthen, your word that will give direction in the name of Jesus Christ. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, um, Continuing from where we stopped last week, how do you identify your purpose? We have itemized that, but let there be addition today. One of the things that will show you your purpose in life is your pain, your suffering. Your pain, your suffering. Inside your pain, inside your suffering, your purpose is there. Your purpose is hidden there. You know, uh, there are a lot of people that are going through peculiar problems, consistent problems. And over time, they have prayed, they have fasted, they have done all kinds of prophetic action. And the problem persists. Eventually, when solution comes, only for them to discover that God has actually kept their purpose inside the problem. Let me give you an example. A woman was asking for the fruit of the womb for nine years. She kept on praying. She kept on praying, attending programs, attending programs, receiving prophecy, receiving anointing. All prophetic actions were done, sowing seed. And it took her nine years. Right now, when God answered her, on the tenth year, she gave birth to a boy. Two years later, she gave birth to a girl. Another two years later, she gave birth to another boy. Uh, since that time, within this period of six years that God had been uh, faithful to her accordingly, any time a woman 
seeking for the fruit of the womb, come close to her, and she lay hands on them and pray with them. They conceive. Meaning that this problem have been a problem to sort her to purpose. Let me also give you another example. Abraham Lincoln was a father of failure. Most of the things he lay hands to do, he failed. In marriage, he failed. In politics, he failed. In business, he failed. But he kept on persisting. He kept on pushing. And today, he is the renowned progenitor and the father of American politics. A founding father of a great nation. That is the man that was used to failure. That was the man that, if it is today, would have gone through depression and committed suicide. But God, have he did his purpose in his repeated failure. So persistency, consistency, is an opener to purpose. That's how that one scaled through. So your pain. I know a man, Otumba Collins, he owns a very powerful, beautiful estate known as Fort Royal Estate, Fort Royal Homes. He was in a boys' quarter with his wife and children, struggling to pay rent, year, year in, year out, when it is time to pay rent. He was in that purpose. He was in that pain. He was in that suffering when God visited him. And gradually, gradually, he acquired a small land. The land began to expand. And gradually started building. And today he owns a very large estate, a luxury estate, affordable. Why? Because purpose called him. So most people who are suffering certain things now, most people who are going through pains now, if they look straight into the pains, if they look straight into the, into the suffering, their purpose is hidden there. Their purpose is hidden there. Can I give you another example, sir? Look at David. King Saul was sick. King Saul was afflicted by demons. So they needed a man to help him out. They brought in David as a boy to play flute for him. While David was playing flute, the demons of insanity will relieve him. But do you know that in that process, the king sitting on his throne, while David is playing flute, will carry a spear and throw it in order to pin David to the wall and kill him. David will escape again. Several that happened. Now that was done to him by a king in the palace. The same David, God gave him the wit, the courage to bring down the troubler of Israel called Goliath. When Goliath came down, sir, the promotion of David was just short-lived. They gave him a wife, made him a general in the army to head certain um, platoon. But that was all. Yet they were plotting to kill him. The same king and his royal guards, which we call presidential uh, guards today, were after him, looking for him to slaughter. He ran away from the palace, ran away from his family, from his wife. And he was found in the cave of Adulam. He stayed there for how many years? Over 12 years. That is where men, impotent men, fugitive criminals who were running away from the law, they met there. They all joined him. He trained them and eventually they become mighty men of valor. We call them David's mighty men of valor. This is purpose. This is purpose. Look at the suffering he went for, or he went through for the state, the suffering he went through for the nation of Israel. The same king that should be his helper. His supporter, it was the same king that drove him from the city. So that's a man that recognizes his purpose. You know, let me add to this because I see that um, our pastor has joined us also. Ah, so don't worry, don't worry, let him continue. Let him continue, let him continue. Okay, pastor, now, go ahead. If you, you are, he's rounding oh, up. If, you go ahead, he's rounding okay. up. Okay, now if you also look at the scripture. Your purpose is something that you do with ease. Mm -hmm. If they wake you up from your sleep, sorry, Pastor Sadiq, you move to your side. Move to your side. Pastor Sadiq, move to your side. Okay. Go ahead, sir. 
Purpose is something you also do with ease. They wake you up from sleep, you do it. They wake you up, you, you are on the street, they stop you, you can achieve it. Anytime, any day, you can achieve it. And you can achieve it without pay. You, you can achieve it without trouble. It's your purpose. Like, I'll give you an example. When it comes to fighting the Philistine, you don't need to motivate something. He does it with ease. When they were waiting for him at the gates, they said they lay in wait for him over till morning. When he came, he didn't pass through the gate. He didn't pass through the door. The Bible says he lifted the gate. Hello. <laughs> the man they were waiting for lay in wait for. They have laid ambush for him. He pulled the whole place out of the ground. With the post, they say he was moving. The people opened their mouth in agape and said, what a man. So when it comes to, look at when he, he killed 1,000 men with the jawbone of an axe. He would just look at you and laugh and say, oh, if it, with joy, with ease, without pain, he would love to do it. So purpose is that thing that you want to do with ease. is what you want to do without pain. Amen. Now, let me give you another example of how to discover your purpose. You know, the scripture says in Exodus chapter 31, God called Moses. And the Lord said to Moses, He said, Moses, go to the Bezalim, the son of Uri, the son of Hor, of the tribe of Judah. For I have put in him wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in the workmanship of carving things, stones, iron, gold, and silver. Go to him. God gave him the name, his grandfather's name, his father's name, his house address, and his content. You see, this man, I put in him. So one way of discovering your purpose is your talent. That talent in you. And from there, Moses picked him up. He's the one that built the Holy of Holies. He's the one that built the, the, the eagle. He's the one that built everything with his team. That is purpose. You see, I have put in him wisdom, inherent wisdom, born with wisdom you are born with for the purpose of your creation. Matthew, you know a man called Kule Ajayi. Kule Ajayi is a saxophonist. Kule Ajayi is known all over the world. Anywhere you know Jadiji or you know him, he has traveled all over the world. What is he doing? He plays sax. That is his purpose. That have taken him all over the world. Not his academic qualification. Some of us don't even know his academic qualification. We know he's a well read man, perhaps PhD holder. But we don't know. What we know is that we see Kula Jai, you see, sax, saxophone. <laughs> you know, so this is what God has put in him inherent gift. So we see it in children. A young man called him AY. If you have put AY, AY is a comedian. If you have put AY in a medical school, he will kill people in the hospital. People will die in the sense. He will be running after the nurses. Just try to keep himself uh, busy because he needs to distract himself. <laughs> but look at him now. He's all over the world by making people happy and laugh. Cocos is a gift that is there. It's a gift that is hidden in you that once you explode, you expose it and it will explode and the world will come to recognize it. Purpose. Purpose. Purpose is great. Purpose is important. We can pray out our purpose. We can look inward and see our purpose. If you are up to 12, 15 years now, you should be able to determine your purpose. What do you love doing? What do you have passion for? What are you crazy for? What is easy for you to do? You know? What is the story behind your bed, as we discussed last week? What is the story before your bed that is written, that is told? So in all this, we are able to determine purpose. Amen. Pastor, are you true? Oh, yes. Pastor, are you true? Okay, yes, thank you very yes. much. You have, you have taken us far a little bit.
uh, Pastor, uh, Pastor Sadiq, you just chip in some things within five minutes. You, you will lead us in prayer. You will lead us in prayer. Pastor Sadiq will pray for us. You too will pray for us. Our, we will pray for Nigeria that God should allow Nigeria also to discover their purpose. And I pray all will be well in Jesus' name. Go ahead, Pastor Sadiq. Praise the Lord. Yeah. No, Pastor, I've said it all. But notwithstanding, there's just a little thing I want to chip in. As Pastor have told us, giving us different examples in the Bibles and in our contemporaries, that there are things we need to know. I will just say one thing. In everything in this life, everybody that God has created, God has created them with a purpose. And as we are living in this world, we see vehicles, bikes, everything has its own purpose. And we are using them for their purpose. Now, as we as human beings, in the hand of God, God has given us purpose that we need to fulfill in life. But there is one thing that is very important for us to fulfill this purpose. If we don't know God, if we don't know God, we will just be living on our own. But when we know God, He will be the one to reveal to us the purpose He has created us with. Because every one of us, we came to this world blank. We don't know anything. It's only our parents that are leading us that we should do this. We should do this. And we are following their footsteps. And in order for us to discover this purpose, it takes the grace of God for God to lead us and to give us the things that we need to know. What I just want to say before I lead us in prayer is that anything that God has given to us, we should endeavor to seek his face, to ask him what exactly we need in order to discover our purpose. It's not just for us to be thinking that this is what I know how to do and this is what I desire to do. But we should rather ask God that what is that thing that you have created me for and how will I go about it in getting it done? And I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. Let's close our eyes. I will just lead us in prayer, in praying for this nation and for us to be able to get it right in this coming election. Father, in Jesus' name, Almighty God, we come before thee this morning. Lord, we commit this nation into your hands. We have spent 62 years of this nation. Lord, come and have mercy upon this nation and everything we need to get it right. Father, Lord Jesus, reveal it to all the citizens of this nation through your power, through your might in Jesus' name. Father, we ask and pray that all of us that are present here today, none of us will live out of your purpose in Jesus' name. Father, we ask and pray that everything you need to reveal to us, in order for us to live in conformity with your will and the purpose you have given to us, Father, reveal it to us by your power in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that your servant that you have used for us this morning, more of your power, more of your anointing. Father, reveal it and relieve it upon his life in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray the convener of this program, Lord Jesus, you have given him the vision to be ditching out the word to people in order for them not to live a miserable life. Father, I pray that you continue to strengthen him in Jesus' name. Father, I pray that God, as we continue, you will uphold us and strengthen us through your power, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much. Over to you, Pastor. Over to you, Pastor. Thank you very much, sir. Okay, Father in heaven, the ancient of this, we thank you. We thank you. For thank you for it. We thank you for a season like this. We thank you for all the trouble you have thank had you, to go through as a nation. The pains, the suffering, the thank death. You, Father. Father, we thank you because nothing happens without you. Thank you, Lord God Almighty. It is clear and obvious that Nigeria is made for a time like this. At a time like this, where the world is coming to an end. At a time like this, where we are in the season of falling apart. 
And we know that you have raised this nation to carry your banner all over the world because you said that this gospel must be preached to all corners of the earth. And Nigeria, my purpose, seems to be in position to bring this to reality. We ask, oh God, you will keep your army in Nigeria. Your end time to mm -hmm. save in Nigeria, you empower them. In the mighty name of Jesus. Mm -hmm. I know that my God will know that by the natural resources endowed to Nigeria, it is very clear you have also set this country to be the end time financial of your kingdom on earth. Mm -hmm. We ask, oh God, leaders that we know how to annex these resources, leaders that are not greedy, leaders that are not foolish but leaders in the order of David, leaders in the order of Melchizedek, leaders in the order of Solomon, men of wisdom and understanding. Father, you release them to us in the name of Jesus. Father, we declare that the seat of leadership in this country is taken from the hand of the occultic people, is taken from the hand of the wicked people, from the hand of Ahab, and be given to those you have proposed to lead this nation to greatness. Thank you, Father. For Nigeria is about to enter the next level of greatness. Mm -hmm. In Jesus' mighty name. Mm -hmm. Amen. God bless you, Pastor. Thank you for that lovely addition concerning them. Purpose. I, I love that. I love you, sister. Thank you very much. I right, so will just pray. We'll just pray for, like, I'll pray for two minutes for Nigeria. And number two, I'm grateful to you, uh, pastors, Pastor Sadiq, my pastor, Pastor Pius. Very wonderful dish. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. God bless you in Jesus' name. Our Father and our God, we bless you. We thank you for the time like this. We thank you for us to discover our purpose as a nation, as an individual, as a family, as a body of Christ. We say, blessed be your name in Jesus' name. Let it be pray that God... As many people that are saying that, no, this country will not move forward, Daddy, you will put them to shame. In the mighty name of Jesus, as many people that say, no, this country will never be at rest, Daddy, you will put them to shame. In the mighty name of Jesus, this country will grow from strength to strength. Nigeria, God will lead us right. God will choose for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, God will not put us to shame. In the mighty name of Jesus, God will arise for our help. In the mighty name of Jesus. All right. <laughs> um, thank you, everybody. Thank you for thank the you. people that has joined. Thank you for the viewer. God bless us in the mighty name of Jesus. Not only that one, please subscribe, invite your friend. By the special grace of God, before this week runs to an end, we will tell you our viewers, our program that will be commenting on Twitter. We will tell you our viewer, our program that will be commenting on Facebook. Therefore, subscribe, tell a friend and tell a friend. This is the place where you're supposed to be. Thank you and God bless you. God bless Nigeria. Please be a good person. Be a good person. The change begin with everybody. God bless us. For the second time, uh, for the last time, I want to tell you, Pastor, I'm grateful I did not take this opportunity for granted. Next week, you, Pastor Pius, will still be the one that will take us for the last edition you are going to take us on this show. God bless you. God bless our, God bless our nation. Pastor Sadi, God bless you. You too, still come back next week. God bless you, sir. Bye for now, sir. Hello everybody. My name is Adewale. Today's topic we are talking on will Manchester be blue or, or red? Will Manchester be blue or red? Sorry, I don't want distraction. Don't want distraction. Thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. <laughs> Will Manchester be blue or red? Ima, if you are there, please, we are waiting. Okay. 
Okay. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's Hello, Ima, are you there? Yes, I'm there. Good evening. Hello, sir. How are you? Very well. Look. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. Very well. Very well. Very well. Very well. Okay. Nothing to you. Sorry, we are still you know, in the Ozu field. I just want to offer everything so that we can hear ourselves and enjoy ourselves more better. How is everything? Okay. Well, can you hear me? The topic today. Well, can you hear me louder? Yeah. Okay, can you hear me more louder? I can hear you. I can hear you. But can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you very clear. The topic today is will Manchester United be blue or red? Will Manchester United be blue or red? How far? Well, yes, we will have we will really have, we'll have a great time tonight. And uh, I think uh, oh, the other guest. Yes, the guest, yeah. Okay. Just send your request to me. I uh, I said I'm talking to Abu Malik. If you are there, sir, just send your request to me. I'll be able to check. We'll be able to accept you. Another person will join us. Say why will soon join us very soon. Okay. Can we go ahead and say will the topic is will Manchester United be blue? All right. Okay. okay. Well, um, I am um, I am of the red, I am of the red half of Manchester. So obviously, you should know that uh, my bias would be would be that uh, Manchester would be would be red. And then, um, um, okay, uh, Abdul Malik is here. Good evening. Good evening. So why Why I would say. Why I would say Manchester would be red once again is because um, in the unlikeliest of times, when when you don't expect Manchester United to turn up, when when you do not believe Manchester United will turn up, that is when they they, they always do against um, Manchester Manchester City. So uh, I am grateful. I. I saw earlier in the news today that um, Marcus Rashford is back and um, Anthony Martial is also back in contention. So I, I, I do believe the, the, the setup would be obviously Manchester City would have the possession. They would, they would have the, uh, the chances created and maybe chances con no, not just converted. But I, I just do believe that. Um, Yang is going to have the upper hand over Guardiola this, this period because um, we at Manchester United have been letting themselves down a lot more has been the back line and it has been solidly fixed this season. We have seen um, we have seen the the the, the statistics of um, Lisandro Martinez uh, compared to Harry Maguire in recent times. You see that the lapses the 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 mistakes and the lack of concentration. Maguire is a good player. You are not audible enough. Bro. Me, I'm not hearing you very well. You are not audible enough. Okay. Malik, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you, but the problem is your network is kind of um, giving us small, small, small um, blue screen or something like that. Okay. Um, is, it, is it any better? Okay. Oh, um, why your network is giving us more issue? Please, mom, um, my bro, Ab Malik. What do you see? Will Manchester be blue or red? Which of them? <laughs> okay. Good evening. Uh, sorry for joining in late. I would like to let everybody know that tomorrow will be a blue day <laughs> because I, I I don't see Manchester United stopping Sunday. Manchester City. I'm I'm not seeing the I'm not seeing it. I'm not seeing it. Um, 
out of the blue, you can say maybe Manchester United has come out like once or twice and tried to like get something out of the match. But this tomorrow game is going to be a different one entirely. I can tell you that it's going to be a very, very different one because Manchester City already knows what and what Man U are. I mean, Manchester United have been doing, especially to the likes of Arsenal and the Liverpool. They know what they, they've done and they know how they actually come out on top in those games. So, they will not want the same thing to happen to them. Manchester United might want to come on the counter, but these days, Manchester City have already known that this is what people used to do to them. So, they know how to like solve those kind of issues. So, I don't see anything happening from Manchester United tomorrow. Or Sunday, rather. Okay, um, Abdul, Abdul, Abdul Malik. Yes, Abdul Malik. Abdul Malik. Yeah. Yeah. Doesn't look like the team that uh, is going to is going to topple uh, in Holland right now. But um, history has shown us that you cannot write Manchester United off when they have something to prove. Um, only, only in the in the in the in the loneliest of in the in the loneliest of state, he he toppled he he toppled Guardiola I think twice or even three times. So I'm not I'm not I'm not disputing the fact that um, City and United are on the same level. They are not on the same level. City is currently the best in the league. But we are seeing that when it matters most. Manchester United thumbs up. I think you you can see for yourself this season against Liverpool, against Arsenal. When it matters the most, Manchester United will come out to play. We are no pushovers, we are no walkover, we will give you a fight. So that is why I don't want you to write up this city. You are very right. <laughs> we are not you understand. Don't write up this thing just yet. I did not I didn't I, I was not to see Manchester United play Liverpool this season. But I was I was thinking it was going to be another job. In. Last season, Liverpool ran out um, nine, nine zero winners home and away. For this season, Manchester United they had something to prove. So they did not let that happen. Arsenal, 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 I think they've never lost against anybody before even after playing Manchester United. So you you can't you can't just you can't just throw it all in. Guardiola, Alan is going to do this. Guardiola is going to do that. I, Guardiola is good. We know that. But against Manchester United, there are no nevers. Thank you. It's like your network is somehow bad. I want to bring it. I don't know. Before I, I can bring four people in. But now it's like I can't bring four people. I don't know the reason. They said I can't bring four people in. But oh uh, please can you just remove yourself? I will still bring you in back. I want to listen to AY. AY is okay. for the United. Please. <laughs> I'm also I'm also United fans. Okay. AY. Sorry, Abu Malik, I'm waiting. Just stay tuned. No, I'm I'm with you. I'm with you. Hey, from your own side. Okay. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> hey, well, how are you? Sir. I'm very fine, sir. <laughs> he might have said that there will be a sleepless night for Mayu. How far? For Mayu? Yeah. The Man no. City will show the red devil they are. Uh, no, no. I don't think so because um, this is a debut match. And that's always the top for Man City. Let's check um, 10, 10, 10 previous games we had with them at their own at um, Etat. So, 10 games. We won 8 of them, if I'm not mistaken. They won just 2 in their own. Our last 10 games in their own. So, it will be very, very difficult for them to, to win this match. Forget about Alan. Just for, let's forget about Alan. Oh my God, Alan. <laughs> no, 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 no. The pressure is on my you now. The pressure is on my you now, I know. But it has always been tough for Man City to win my you. That's just the truth. No matter, no matter the form that Man City is, no matter how dull Man United is. 
um, the match on Sunday is a total war. Is a do or die. Yes, sir. Okay. What 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 did I what did I want everybody to realize now, ba? The man you has won them eight times and all that. Man, yes. it's only a well that you can say Manchester City has presented as a good striker. And all those matches usually on injury. He doesn't no. usually play those matches. So I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Now, I'm, the Manchester I'm, City has been, and they have I'm everybody sorry, on board. <laughs> you don't no. understand. No, let's, let's talk about last season now. Manchester United okay. was very poor last season. Everybody knows that. But okay. our last game, we won you guys. Uh, it was 3-1 or it was 2-1 or 3-1. When uh, Matomini scored the last goal from um, your keeper's mistake. No, it was very no. We are, we are not informed then. All those things are in the past. All those things no, are in the past. past. No, no, it's very clear. We are not informed then. We are not informed. No, I'm you I'm really sure. People don't always have one or two bad days, you know. Everybody no, can no. Go in, you cannot do no, going no. this people now. Okay, at the end of the day, what later happen? Who, who no, won then. the game? No, I know, it's Man City, but I'm talking about <laughs> this game between <laughs> us. Man City, Man City, Man U, it has only been tough. Because doing that, Man City was in their best form when we won you guys. You're in your best okay, form. what I want you to understand now, Ba. What I want you to understand. No matter how good, no matter how informed a team is, you always have a bad day. And I want you to understand that on Sunday, it's not going to be a bad day anymore. It's going to be a blue day. So just have it in mind. Make sure you do before you go watch the game anyway. No, no. I trust my Martinez. Oh, okay. Who is this? Who is this? Who is the best defender that can stop Alad? I'm not saying Martinez, Martinez and Barry, they will stop him. They will stop him. Okay, yes, now what do you want to do? If you are listening to me, if you are listening to me, you will <laughs> come online now. Hey, well, you are going to you are going to leave. You are going to move, you are going to call, you are going to leave. I'm going to no invite problem, you now. No problem. Oh, hey, oh. hey why? Well, what is your own yes. presentation? What is your own predict for tomorrow? Tomorrow? Um, no, on Sunday, rather. Let's on say... Sunday, rather. Son. No, Sorry, let, let me give Alan. Let me give Alan one. you come online or wait. <laughs> so, let's say, Alan, Alan with 4-1. I like the guy. But uh -huh. definitely, we win 3-1. Manchester three United 3. Three... Alan, okay. one. Go, go, go. Ima will come and finish you. Go, <laughs> yeah. Ima, oh, yeah, remove yourself. Everybody, everybody remove yourself. <laughs> And wait, stay on the line. <laughs> how, okay. how now? How will well, this continue okay, that you expect Martin Kari to be caught just one goal? How? Are they with you, my guy? Alpha! I do. Okay, sir. Can you hear me? This time, huh? Uh -huh. Ima? Yes. Can hey, you why say yes. that? They will bridge, they will block Alad, the almighty Alad, tomorrow, um, on Sunday. And he is very sure that Manchester United will go home, win, win, the, win the, the game with 3-1. What do you say to that? Well, well, I am not quite particular about the scoreline, but I, I just know that Manchester United will win against Manchester City. I'm not particular about the score line, but I know Manchester United is going to win. Um, Alan, Alan is not going to get a chance in that game. He's not going to get a chance. I, I, I can assure you. Lisandro Martinez is about maybe almost half of uh, Alan's height, but I, I, I believe he's going to be up to the task of keeping Alan quiet. So once more, Manchester in Manchester derby. Or Manchester will be red after the game. That's that, that's my final submission. Thank you. Okay, so wait, what did I want everybody to understand, ba? Okay, sir. What did I want everybody to understand? Holland is not the only guy. Who. He's a very patient guy. You can see what he did in the Champions League. He's a very patient guy. He's not in a hurry to score a goal or two or three. Mm -mm. If he's going to be a one goal lead that will win the game for them, I'm assuring you, Holland is going to be the guy, and he's going to take the day. 
no matter how tight, no matter how rough they want to hold him, no matter how how they want to hold him, Alan is going to take the day. And let's say, let's say Alan is going to have a bad day or anyhow he's going to be, we are, there are guys on the bench. There are guys on yeah. the bench. Alvarez is there, my brother. He has not even played a single game this season. And that guy is fire. So don't 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 disturb yourself. Make sure let's watch the game and see what's going to happen. But I'm telling you, Manchester will be blue. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Oh, it has been a very difficult match within Manchester United and uh, and uh, Manchester City. Do you are you seeing it? Is it because they are close to themselves or because they bear almost the same name or why why is it like that? Abd Malik, what do what do you have to say to it? Okay, um when it comes to Derby Bar, you can even look at it around the world. There is always these um difficult uh, issues around. Sorry, I just have um lights out in my area. So no maybe worries, that's yeah, my <laughs> So, so, what I'm trying to say here is this, please. Manchester Derby is always very difficult and very, very strict because you can't have a two, two teams in the, in the same um, environment and expect the game to go easy. It's just like the Tottenham and Arsenal Derby. Like, that's going to come out come up tomorrow. So, you can, you can not be in the same environment and expect something that... You are fighting for the fans. This is a game for the fans. The game on Sunday is not a game between only the players and any. Mm -mm. It's a game. It's a bragging right. We won you. We win us. All those thing, kind of things. That's what is going to happen. So it's it's always very difficult for either of the team, and there's no way you can say somebody will go to take a day. Just anyhow, Manchester City has already take has taken a lot from Manchester United when Manchester United is on top of their game. Now it's Manchester City's time, and they are going to take the day. Thank you. Okay, before you leave, before you leave, I want to bring you still stay online. Hey, why if you are there, prepare yourself to come on live. Hey, why if you are there, listen to me. You prepare yourself to come on live. See, what is your own score line tomorrow on Sunday? What is your own score line? Can you just read it? Who we'll still um, come and review I, this match? Oh. I I don't want I don't want to be too strict on Manchester United, so I will just give them maybe like uh, four one. To Manchester Malik, City. Malik, four one. Ah, hey, you not finished my you. <laughs> hey, wife, just soft. Don't worry, you are coming online. Just soft. You said three one. Hey, <laughs> back to you. Okay, you can still stay online. Just, I want to bring a wife. Ah, uh, uh, back to you. Malik, maybe you go, you will go. I will call you that you should come online again. Okay, thank you. Eh. Uh, back to you. What is your own score line to, on Sunday? Okay, um, it's going to be a very close call. So I would say two one. Manchester United two. Manchester United one. <laughs> eh? What is it? I said 2-1, 2-1. Manchester United, 2. Manchester City, 1. Why all of them, they give my you 1-1, 1-1. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Manchester United, my you, my you, 2. Man City, 1. Man you is going to win. So my you, 2. Man City, 1. My you, 2. Did you hear me? Yes, 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 yes. My you, 2. Man City, 1. Hey, why you said my you? City. Yes, sir. Man City one. Malik say Man City four. four. Man you one. <laughs> okay, back to us. We'll soon end up the show now. What is the all this on and off for Man you? What is your own view to it? Oh, uh, Uma, Uma, Uma said Manchester United. One three, oh, Manchester United three, three, three. Man City one. one Musa one. one, you are doing well. <laughs> okay, what all this on and off of Mayu? 
Yeah. What is your own take? I'm talking to to stop. Stop. What is your own take? This on and off, Mayu. What do you, what is your own take on it? And uh, for now, there is no on and off for Mayu. There was off before, so now we are on. That's just it because we lost our two first match, right? And we are back now. So there's no off for us now. We are going straight. Okay. Among the two coaches, I put you to Ima. Among the two coaches, which one is more experienced and te have the uh, technical ability to win the match? <laughs> well, of the chance, even if I am in Manchester United, uh, I would also, I would always give it to Pep. Uh, that you know that. Because I am, I am telling you, uh, yeah, I'm telling you that um, on the, 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 the advantage, uh, say, uh, the advantage they have is going to have tomorrow is the determination. On Sunday, on Sunday. It's not the best. Yeah, it's on Sunday, yes. The advantage is going to have is that he is out to prove a point that he is not, he is not, a, he is not an ordinary coach. Pep mm -hmm. is the better coach, and he's going to be, he's going to be relaxed in a way that he is going to, he's going to come out to the period. So Tehran is going to. He would, he, would, he would want to prove a point, so that would that would make him that would make him more practically adept to to making things happen over Guardiola on Sunday. So that way, but on um, record, past glory, past trophy, we all know that Pep Guardiola has won it all. He has won it everywhere: Spain, uh, Germany, now in England, he has won. Uh, he has won, um, I think that's about three, three Premier League out of out of four. So we are not we are not going to we are not going to take that away from him. But uh, Stehan, the Manchester United coach, is just out to prove a point that he's not a pushover. So I am going to I'm going to expect Stehan to be victorious on Sunday. Thank you. Okay, as we are watching, please can you just bring bring out your presentation? Maybe next week we are going to review this topic again and check the default of the matches. You can bring out your presentation. I want to see your presentation as you are coming. You can put it in your comment section. Oh, uh, anyway, before you leave the show, what is your own take home? That what to, to confer? Uh, what do you have to say to Manchester United fans about uh, ahead of the match on Sunday? I'm talking to you, Ay. What is your own take about ahead of? I mean, I'm talking ahead of the match on Sunday. What is your own take? I mean, a word for the Manchester United fans. No, I think um, they should just relax themselves, get the first call, go to the nicest viewing center in their area, and enjoy the match. Honestly, it's going to be a very, very tough match, to be honest, and it's not going to be easy for Manchester United. That so you just if you take a big training and hard work for us to win the match, so they should just enjoy themselves. And please, nobody should quarrel each other, don't fight any Manchester, you know, say Manchester to be fans because they are enjoying themselves also. So I just be supporters, we should just enjoy ourselves. It's going to be a very friendly and, and, and good match. Okay, Abu Malik. Okay, Abdul Malik will be waiting for you to come online to come and tell your own take towards the match. I mean, towards the match, what is your own take? Anyway, you can leave the show. Back to you, Mr. Iman. What is your own take to encourage the Manchester City okay, and Manchester um, United? Okay, um, like I have rightly said, um, the, um, Manchester United is the underdog here. Yeah? So you are expecting Manchester City to have bulk of the possession. That being said, every United fan needs to be relaxed. We need to know that we are going to win, but it's going to be ugly. It's not going to be sweet. The victory is not going to be easy. We are just going to grind out the result. So like I said, it's going to be a, a very close call. One goal margin is going to give Manchester United the victory. So that would, that would, that would inform you that going to come at a cost. So everybody should just hold on to the fact that victory at last it, it, it is. Yeah, thank you. Okay. <laughs> back, back to you, my brother. 
You find some people are for it's like you are the, your own predetention is the one that is very high. Man City for Mayu one. Soft, just soft. Say three. Man, 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 you three. Man City one. He man said, Man City, Man you two. Man City one. One of my brother also predicts on the score line on the on the on the he predicted the three one. What about your own? What is your own take? That it's like your own two ratio one. What is your own take <laughs> to all the fans of the? Okay, basically, what I would tell uh, any Man City fan that I uh, which club are you supporting? Uh, I'm a Arsenal fan, but I uh, want everybody to know that on Sunday, on Sunday, it's going to be. I I don't want to be too cruel on Manchester United because they have they have done a lot, and I appreciate what they are doing. But there is no there is like like you we will say there is no Abuja to anywhere. There is no, you have you to go, go through the process. Everybody have to go through the process. You understand? Even the Manchester City of today that we are seeing is not. They did, it did not happen out of the blue. You understand? It, they went through a process, and Manchester United don't want to bypass that process. Is that what I'm saying? That there is no way you have to follow some things to be done. Man is on the line, but they want to bypass something which is not possible. You understand? So let's go back to the topic, which is what we will see on Sunday. Manchester City fan or anybody, any football fan that cares to support Manchester City that day should just be ready for a good game. You will laugh all through the match because you are going to see a very good game. You understand? So that's, that's what I just have to say to anybody supporting Manchester City because it's going to be a good game. The focus will be on Ireland and Ireland is not going to be the guy. The admirer scored against Nigeria, you know. That's all he needs. He's back to his best now. You understand? Some of the players that are not doing very well yet, you cannot tell me that you've seen the best out of Manchester City. The only thing we are seeing out of Manchester City now is Ireland. And on Sunday, the rest, they will come Almighty on board. Almighty Ireland. Almighty Ireland. <laughs> I wish Ireland can play for Mayu on that day against Man City. <laughs> that's everybody, that's every man you fans. That's every man you fans wish, which is not possible. So they have, they have, they have Anthony. Let them be eating all the leftovers. Okay. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much for coming to the show, Ima. Thank, thank you very you. much, Malik. Thank you very much, Soft. Thank, you. thank you very much. You. Maybe I'm not promising you, but I wish you. all of us can come together. It may be on Facebook so that it can we can have like almost ten person at once. We will now review the match, check the match, how it take happen. Waiting no, apple. No, no, no. Plus, waiting apple. Yeah, no. <laughs> now, sleep. now sleep for that place. I no, see I'm very no, grateful no. you guys for joining my show. Please subscribe, share the yeah, link, invite more. By tomorrow, we are going to talk on Christian Hour, the rose of religious leaders and uh, our kings. The rose of religious leaders and our kings. Therefore, please, and our traditional ruler, rather, please share it, invite your friend, let us talk. The roles of religious leaders and our traditional leaders in Nigerian politics. Please come, let us talk, let us analyze things, let us talk. This place is not for violence. We are here to catch fun. Please, God bless yes. us, God bless everybody. My bros, thank you very much for coming to the show. Thank you, bye for now.